issues. No problems. Hello. Hello. Hey, oh. hello, 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 hello. Welcome hello. everyone to the next episode of Sagas and Solace, the Whispering King, episode twenty-two. Yeah. Hey, hey, it's Alabama. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. I was uh, uh, was having uh, yeah. heterosexual intercourse with my wife. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. I second that idea. <laughs> I also was having a heterosexual <laughs> And I wasn't even late, you know. <laughs> and I, it was actually his wife. <laughs> it was actually his wife. <laughs> nice. I love this group. I almost started tearing up, and I'm like, why am I sad? Now, why? why? Oh, this is make believe. <laughs> <laughs> Why is how Marlo? You, how could you do that? That's my wife. <laughs> That's my wife who is real. Hmm. Right to the heart. Oh, was it the fake bunny girl you've talked about? Yeah, you're familiar. Weep a whack. Oh man. No oh, man. Uh, you haven't seen her in oh, ages. He's gonna weep that oh, way. I know. <laughs> That's the problem. Get her in this library. Find a corner. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Ooh, I'm gonna go Ignore. over here and touch Ignore. a sapphire book just to get rid of myself. Summon, summon your fucking familiar. <laughs> <laughs> Where's that disturbing Sorry. sapphire book? I gotta just kill myself. Oh my <laughs> god, why did you say Read it like that? Like, knowledge. Summon your fucking familiar right now. Like, <laughs> oh man, that's actually crazy. What do you think about this, Laza? I'm just gonna go upstairs now what, and what run. Is, what does Laza think? Uh... Oh dear. He's sick in that too. Just kidding. Well, you know, sometimes he, you, the ladies like my trunk. Hmm. Hmm. He's about to start trunking. I'm gonna trunk. Hmm. You just wait till they hold my hog. Oh. My whole hog. <laughs> really, and that's essentially the recap for uh, Sagas and Songs. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's, that's, right. that's everything so that's that happened. Around. <laughs> oh, right. damn. It's a monkey. Oh, damn. Oh. What is it, dog? I forgot it's Mother's Day. Did you get a gift for her? Oh, so who, who's doing the recap? Yes, who would like to do the recap? You mean that wasn't the recap? No, that wasn't. That was a great recap. That was us immediately memeing and degenerating. Immediately. Uh. Yeah. I'm going hmm. to start volunteering, people. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, I do. House. I you had a lot of drama happen. Oh, that's true. What me? Talk about your drama to the yeah. Talk about your drama to the audience. You have to get them oh, yeah. invigorated and all riled up to watch the previous episode. I you gotta that's true. stare off in the direction the board was watching us. All right, so they, a, you gotta up, you gotta upsell that Paramount Plus shit to these people. Yeah, last we, session, uh, my battle pass. We should have mentioned that. Last session, we found ourselves in the um, the room with the portals, looking at the different worlds and everything. And we had just uh, picked up on Mr. Nenonoth, uh making communications. Uh, and then we proceeded to investigate various portals before Mr. Cornelius arrived. Uh, and then, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Nenonoth spoke to someone through a portal that he didn't know. Uh, for no reason, except for it was a druid, and apparently that was enough. Uh, after that, uh, Mr. Cornelius arrived. Um, oh, yes, um, Mr. Chrome saw the goddess of fate through the, um, through the portal after Mr. Ninoth's little stint. And Mr. Cornelius assures us not to worry about her, because she is, in fact, a bitch. So... Uh, we're not worrying too much. Um, we looked around, we saw various worlds. Uh, we also 
uh, took a look in uh, one of the portals to see uh, refractions, and Na had a big muscly mustache man, and Mr. Nenonov had... I, I don't want to see that again, so I'm not going to refresh it. Um, Mr. Marlowe had some cool wizard on a tower. Um, Mr. Chrome had uh, some rock man. Uh, oh, and we affected, uh, Mr. Chrome affected uh, Swig's uh, guy and apparently sprung him from jail, sort of. This is in deep with the Inquisition, so that's bound to be interesting. Uh, and then we saw mine, which one is dead, and we kind of glazed over that one to find that the other is Tellery, which, so that's fun. Anyway, um, yes. Then we came over here, and this is the, um, this is the, um, prismatic study, and we're about to learn about the colors. Yeah, that, that's about it. All right, inspiration for you. Okay, so you guys got a lot of questions, I'm sure, uh, as you have stacked me up with them. Uh, let's go ahead and just start cranking them out, I guess. Um, is there any person you want to start with? Um, I might go first. I think. Uh, all right, so just to reiterate the rules, this includes you, Lawson. If we have any questions about... Yeah, don't actually touch that book. Uh, there are two things that we should consult with one another before asking, researching, even, I guess, talking about in depth. And that is anything that relates to the color violet in specific, especially in events of the past. And the other is that blue book I mentioned. Those we need to have counsel with one another before discussing. Um, other than that, I think we could start... If you want to catch up on the whole Violet Saga in itself, if you haven't read that, Nar, um, might give you a better understanding of what to look for. Uh, yeah, other than that, do you guys... Anything you want to research? Anything... Hmm. hmm. I suppose we're here to learn about the colors or anything like that. Something useful. Yeah. Yeah, there's a bit more that I, I think the rest of us would like to learn, but we could probably Should tackle we... that in the more utilitarian wings, I think. Should we hmm. start off simple? Um, asking about all colors within a party. That should be a nice uh, one to start off with. That's what I was thinking as well. There is reference to something called the prism. I don't know if it is a, a physical or metaphorical thing, but we could start there. Namely, what what is a prism? Uh, what are the implications of a a prism entity that seems to be the cornerstone of everything? At least everything that's written about. Hmm. <clears throat> Seems like a good place start, to start. Start there. What, what is a prism? What is the implications of having one as a, you know, presumably a foundation of a universe? If I were to go and, you know, hypothetically just make a universe, would I need a prism? Would there be an implicit prism? What, what is a prism exactly? Is there a record of such a thing? Like a generalist? Section? Are you asking the DM representing your research? Or are you asking Cornelius? Um... I guess out loud to Cornelius, but more to the DM. Like, like, what exactly is a prism? Okay. Then I will um, discard Cornelius' smart-ass answer. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, give me a second. Let me think about how to answer this for you. Said smart-ass answer was probably to the effect of, You're in the room, look it up for yourself! That's ex exactly what it was. <laughs> so that's exactly what it was. Oh, what is a prison? I don't know. What is a book? Read it, idiot. 
Um, okay. From your research and the access points you have, there's very little about the prism that I can't tell you, although there is some. Um, but we will go over the pieces I can and any natural follow-ups you might have. What is a prism? Well, the prism is both a physical representation as well as a metaphorical representation of color and what the power of the colors in both their mundane and uh, primordial forms actually represent. So the colors have two different versions of themselves. There is the mundane, which is the literal colors of the world, such as Marlowe's black hair and, and gruel and chrome's colored skin and, you know, somebody's orange hair, all that stuff. All of that is the representation of the colors in the light spectrum as they exist in their mundane form. But every color has at least a small, just the tiniest bit of energy from the primordial version of the color, which is why colors can erase such a beauty. It, it is the spark of creation that is created within a person is represented through those colors. Um, and to be clear, the colors also have forms of themselves in sound and taste and touch. So they exist, they exist in all senses. It's just that sight-wise, they are their most recognizable. Hmm. Um, so that's the first thing. Uh, that's what colors that's really are. Cool. Yeah, that's what colors are in, in, the, in the expanse of the game's mundane form of colors. The prism, in its physical form, acts as the tool in which colors are separated when they are mixed together. So they are the refraction of light. The prism represents the tool required for the refraction of light. Now, refraction in the mundane sense, not the primordial sense, represents the separation of those lights from each other. But what is actually more accurate to it, it is that the prism is a catalyst. It is a pathway. In the physical sense, it is a crystal. In the metaphorical sense, it represents a trial. It represents a conflict. It represents a story. And it is through that story, or that prism, that the colors that are once indecipherable from one another refract until they are visible to the observer. Underline that. That's important. Now, that's the mundane. That's the mundanity of it. The primordial version of the colors, which is their actual prismatic force, is represented on a much grander scale. Beauty in all its forms, destruction, power, existence, all these things are each compromised by each one of the different parts of, these, of this color spectrum. And the prism, in the primordial sense, is both a place, it is both a metaphysical representation of the first story in which it is rumored that all creation henceforth, henceforth stems. It is the central point that connects each of the universes. It is the central point, the first thread. It is the, uh, the center point. It is both the place and a metaphorical representation. It exists and it does not exist. Both of these things are true, despite their paradoxical nature. The prism refracts the colors from what they were into what they are, and back and forth again, because they represent the first story. The colors are amongst the most powerful forms of entity, period. There's only one entity more powerful than the colors, and generally speaking, that entity does not interfere um, except only as absolutely necessary, and that is uh, Lord Death. Lord Death, which represents in this case a color himself, which is black, um, which, to be clear, in the painting spectrum, black is all colors, mm -hmm. um, because he is all colors, he is also creation, he's just the opposite of it. 
even though he is devoid of all colors, which in the light spectrum is black, he represents the greatest guardian of all of creation and life, which comprises all colors. So Lord Death is the one above all because he doesn't follow the same rules as everybody else. He's, he's, he's actually um, com almost nearly completely separated from creation because he has to be. And the prism, when you go back to the very beginning of my explanation that the colors refract before the observer in the mundane sense, that happening to like a person uh, in the world, like let's say Marlo looking at a crystal and watching colors refract, is the much, 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 much smaller representation of what death does every day. For death is the observer that watches light refract through the prism. And it is the act of creation that constantly cycles itself. It is the motion that fuels the wheel. The wheel that is Yggdrasil that turns as life grows and branches. That is what a prism is. So if the world, the the whole universe was a leaf on a tree, the prism would rest at the base of the stem of the leaf before any other. I suppose other I suppose you could look at it. Everything. That way. The, okay. the the prism the prism is is both a physical and a metaphorical representation of itself. Um, Nar, hypothetically speaking, if you had a second question on your list, you think that would be a good one? <laughs> Not the first. Right. Not the first. <laughs> it scrolls through. Right. <laughs> so, all right, you've mentioned there being seven colors, and then you mentioned there being another color like black, represented by death. Are there more colors? Yes. So there are seven prim uh, prismatic colors which represent uh, mortality and the mortal aspects of life. There is white, which represents Inu, and is the life stream, and it is comprised within the colors. And there is black, which is Lord Death, who represents the absence of those colors. So the, inner, the inside of the color and the outside of the colors are all covered. However, there are many different types of colors that exist in this prismatic spectrum. These colors that are not one of the main seven are referred to as hues. And these hues, which uh, in Taladonic means blessed, represent uh, potent souls that have accumulated uh, enough accolades that their colors on the tapestry of fate burn brightly. For example... Nearly all refracted souls are hues because huh. they represent those that are interacting directly with a prism. A prism, mm -hmm. in this case, represents the story, including the one that you are in. Okay. And a, a hue can be composed of an infinitesimal amounts of different colorings we each with different so there's potential for an infinite amount of colors yes okay so you could be chartreuse or plaid or whatever huh. taking notes as fast as i'm thinking <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. so there's an infinite amount of colors but there are, an, immense, there are an infinite amount of hues and colors with a lowercase c. There are seven mm. colors. Mm. Which of one of those seven are, are we? I mean, as in the party. What is my color? Your party's prism does not... Your party's prism does not possess the 
facilitate the required number of facets in order to achieve a true color. Therefore, you are merely hues, and your hues are constantly changing as the whims of your fate have yet to be decided. As you are a refracted soul, which means that any color that passes through you is refracted like a prism and is always ever changing. Hmm. Uh, me Meta-wise, you don't have seven players. I have seven. So if we did have seven, effectively, we would... Whatever facet... One of, one of our facets of colors would be selected for being in that group of seven and placed within one of the seven colors, effectively? Yes. If you had seven, if you had seven players, you would qualify for Prismatic Ascension. That wouldn't mean that you would guarantee get it, but you would be eligible for it. That is the reason why, when you discovered the Prismatic Key, that a lot more shit didn't happen. It is because your prism was uh, incomplete. Hmm. Interesting. I think we could probably branch out into individual colors if that's... I know, uh, I know you're interested in yellow and amber, Nar. So I'd be mm. interested in it as well. You have one more major question that I thought of before we do that. Yeah, that's here. If, hang on, let me get my words right, because I know that's important. They've mentioned the main prismatic colors being sealed. But this is an intricate part of creation itself and the world. Is it problematic to the world that the colors have been sealed? No. Actually, the opposite. It's a good thing. Yes. The reason hmm. the violet arc occurred was because one of the colors got out. Was because it got out? Yes. Okay. Or more accurately, um, went against its role as a facet of creation. So its betrayal effectively made mm -hmm. its the position of it as a walking facet. Um, the violet's oh, betrayal. The, the violet's betrayal um, caused the entire prism to fail releasing the other colors as well. And their power unleashed upon the world without the appropriate, uh, well, protocols and facets in place that are there for a reason, were overwhelmed. War, death, basically everything that is good or bad began to uh, extrapolate and began to accelerate and began to become more and more extreme. Which means that conflicts grew in their um, intensity. Now, evil was far more evil, and good was far more good. The clashings of good and evil, and law and chaos, became more and more destructive as the world shuddered from the conclusion of their uh, particular conflicts. And normally, there would even be balance in this, save that because of the act of its, of its traitorous action, uh, the Violet caused even this to kilter towards oblivion. Mm. Oh, was the position of the colors as entities and characters, was that the status quo? Was that how the universe always was, or... And, and by sealing them, is sealing them a novelty, or is sealing them the original state as it should have been? The word sealing them is used by mortal kind who do not comprehend what their actual role and existence is. Sealing them in the prison is returning them to their rightful place. 
returning them to the engine that powers creation. Or more accurately, the engine, the, um, the device in which creation is balanced and continued to exist. Should we be concerned about any of them getting out again? Um, the question of should we be concerned is interesting because I don't think that we would have anything to do with it. And I don't know if it's something that we should be concerned about. Sort of like, should we be concerned hey. if you know, Fair. the universe suddenly stops? It's more so, so. Uh, fear of it happened once. Could it happen again with a different color or something at that point? That is an answer you do not find here. The okay. only reference that you do find is that the prism should have been impossible to have been disrupted. Um, there is no reference as to whether or not it could happen again. There is plenty of evidence here suggesting why it should not ever happen again. Hmm. So if... Uh, uh, I guess they... One thing... It, would it be dangerous for one more, like... Well, not for one, but like... More universally, for one to wield facets of their power that was left out, uh, left over from this battle. Ask your question again, please. Um. So, there's um. Is is there any danger in wielding or interacting with vestiges of the colors left over after the finality of the battle? Yes. All power is dangerous. Hmm. What's your take on this, uh, Miss Twilight Mouse? You seem, uh, I don't know, you seem like something, I guess. I'm just browsing. Um, none of this strikes out to me as it's a little a little big <laughs> but um I suppose now I was looking into Amber and I suppose I am also curious about that as we've interacted with some of that in the past and I've got my own locket what, what does what does Amber do and how how would one use it What? what does Amber do and how does one use it? Is that your question? Yeah. Amber is a representation of one of the peculiar things that can occur in the infinite binding and swirling of these colors. Amber is both a power word, a name, a stone, a color, and ultimately an entity. It was born of the yellow, but became more than that. More than just a normal hue. Amber became the namesake of the guardian of the Violet Gate. 
a manifestation of creation's response to the sickness the violet caused. The tomes speak that she resides there even now as an additional failsafe to ensure that the prism is not disrupted again. That's amazing. Well, I suppose I have a couple of other utilitarian questions. Um, in speaking with uh, Cornelius earlier, he had mentioned how um, reviving my mentor would take a lot of doing. There's, there's a lot of zigzag plan, lots of red strings. Um, Green is the one for the knowledge of life and and powers like that, right? The, to bring people back or to, to make life at all. Is that a power that one can use? Someone, someone like me who is not a mage? Can you ask again? I want to know about the green and if someone who's not a mage can use its powers to bring people back to life. Yes, it is possible. It is a path fraught with peril and danger, but it is possible to attempt to wield a color. Hmm. Well, scratched that no. down in my diary as a long-term goal. Not to fucking hover behind you, but... Um, oh gosh, there you are. Yes. I've been hovering behind you. Uh, words of power and things of that like are... There is a cost. There is a lot of... You could easily destroy yourself in, in search of the tool that you think is necessary to bring back whoever that guy was. Is is that worth it to you? Do you, do you understand the gravity of the magic that you're dealing with? I'm, I'm getting the idea of it, but I'm just looking for options. Not any option will do. Like, for example, Mr. Cornelius offered it earlier to simply do it, but then I'd have to leave Corvanus if I wanted to be with him, and I don't want to do that, so... I can also raise every. him as a skeleton! I'd... Would would you like that? No. He could dance for you. No. Uh, I I do have a favor to ask of you later. I've thought of something, but oh, for now more things to ask for me to do for you. Isn't that great? I thought you liked uh, messing with the matron of fate. You seem to get uh, a good fun out of it. Oh, I like how you tried to make that offer of doing something for you something I would want to do. Classic deflection. <laughs> the, fact, the fact of whether or not that is true, then I would do it just to fuck with her, is irrelevant to the point of you trying to make me want to do it by doing so. Ah, well. I agree with him. But to answer the your least, question, I totally will do it, yes. At least I can do it, ask, but I'll, I'll, I'll get to that later. He'll, he'll fucking lean back in the chair. I, I see what I, you're doing. I agree with him, he's my favorite. He's, he's pretty cool, but don't tell him I told him so. You so. Um, Abby's gonna flip through uh, her journal to a page that's got like all these zigzags and connections to like different ideas scribbled all over the place. Uh, some of the words are like diagonal and sideways and everything. Uh, okay, I've got another one. Um, Mr. Cornelius, you know you know a lot of things. I don't know that this is going to be in any of these books. 
Do you know how the Church of Metheria gets around Corvanus so quickly? Are you asking Cornelius or the studying the tomes? Uh, I guess I can study the tomes, yeah. I, I, well, I think at this point we bifurcate into Cornelius questions, or just generalist questions, and then Violet questions. Sure, yeah, Cornelius then. kind of clumped together. So, if we want to knock out Corn, if there is a chance we blow this room up, may as well <laughs> knock out the Cornelius ones, and then... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cornelius, one answer, was, Cornelius, would just, Cornelius would just answer that one. Uh, they have magic, obviously. They have, well, like, yes. flying mounts and teleportation circles and... Ah, there well, it is. Teleportation circles. Oh, they have, oh, all, they have oh. all kinds of shit like that, of course. They they take it, they sanctify it, he says with quotes, air quotes. <laughs> and then it's okay for them to use because it's the it has the right hat on, or whatever you want to call it. He sprinkles salt on it or some stupid shit. How well guarded are those? Because uh, very quickly... Ah, that's unfortunate. At least for you. For me, I could just kill them all, and then raise them, and then make them dance for me. But not your master. Oh no, can't do that. Because apparently that's not good enough for you and your <laughs> orange fucking hair. Ms. Ms. Mouse. You like my um, hair. Yes, what? You seem... Fuck, I don't know what you seem like, but something's weird. What, what is your uh, compass... Point to at the moment. Mr. Cornelius, still. That's right, baby. Mm. I wink, but I can't wink. I have no <laughs> lids. I'm not done with him. I have more. <laughs> Almost like he wishes he was a meat sack. What? Pulls the book off the shelf. <laughs> Is that back sass coming from you? The permanent birth defect on your face? Reads book harder. <laughs> <laughs> Just sinks into the pages. <laughs> Is this a word I could actually pronounce that? <laughs> Marlo, are you trying to get at something? Um, no. I just... I don't really know you. I, I don't even really know any of the rest of these guys that well. But you're kind of here. Everyone here just seems to know you rather well. Well, at least the 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 general idea of you, Mister Marlowe, is a very nice man who's not very good at showing it. He is most of the time. Yeah. Anyways, he'll um, he'll, he'll he'll pat Marlowe on the back of his trunk. Marlowe will will visibly flinch and kind of shudder for a second, and then accept the back pat. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Cornelius, I have I have one more question. Um, really? Only one more? Yes, yes. This will no, be it. For you now. promise? I'll, only I'll one only more. For, only for a little while. Then the, the, oh, the oh, I, oh, I see. I see. I, I see. have to reload. Uh, you so see. you're fucking lying. Go ahead. Just yeah. ask your stupid question. And no, right. I cannot, in fact, summon another breakfast. We don't follow those rules here. Ah, well, there, there make, goes that make, one. Huh? Make an insight check. <laughs> oh, inside because you I can't fail these breakfast. yet. He he could definitely summon another breakfast. That was a lie. He's lying to me. I know it. Um. Okay. That's well, right, breakfast. You're the only in, one. In the in the corner Reed. of other potential options for the future. Um, if we did manage to complete our quest and plant the new world seed and fix the ley lines and that whole thing, the whole shebang. Wow, right? that's all. Big, big, big tasks. Uh-huh. Uh, if, if we can do that, how long do you think it would be before your manner of high-level resurrection spells would be able to raise uh, someone without uh, making them explode? All right, let's see here. Uh, he'll summon a chalkboard. All right, let's see. Do you have a resident um, psychotherapist that specializes in attachment disorders? Do you what? see him off? No, we we don't believe in therapy here. If you need a therapist, then you need to go back to your studies and learn more magic. <laughs> he speaks to Mr. Laza a lot about feelings and such. Why are you whispering? And stop standing so close to me. 
You You want me to figure this out for you or not? Yes, yes, yes. Please, continue to do math. Let's see. Hmm. There is a lot of variance here as, you know, as magic starts to come back, all sorts of things can happen. But if... uh, uh, Ballpark... Um... Mm, yeah, three generations or so. Uh, human, uh, human, that is. She just like tears a page out of the journal and just crumples it up and sticks it in her pocket. Wow, that'll never work. Must be on her moon blood. Hey, I don't know what that is. Hey, uh, <laughs> go back up here and chill. He blushes and just kind of comes oh. over here with Nar. What, what do you do before I? open a book that might kill all of us. What are you uh, thinking? We're gonna die? I don't want to die. No, that's a metaphor. Oh. Are you sure? You seem very sure. Oh, fuck. Uh, I don't know. Cornelius. Yeah! Oh. Well, now that we're on this magic topic, is there a way for me to use, like, cast if I was alive again, you know, like from taking in magic from uh, the surroundings, the ley lines, instead of using it from within? That, that that depends on a lot of different things. Fuck. But yes, I mean, it's, it's not... You do realize that the whole undead problem you have is easily fixed. Well, he, uh, did, he did say he could make you alive again. I can do a lot of things. That happens to be my area of expertise, after all. If I go back to, to being alive, then the, the, this whole journey of alchemical concoctions would be for nothing, you know? It would be too easy. What? That wouldn't be for nothing. You could apply it elsewhere. Not to mention I could fleshcraft you quite the donger. <laughs> but you can do it. Of course I can. Sizes and everything. Oh, okay, if ho- you... hold, hold on. <clears throat> uh... Oh, la polla grandota. Muy buena. Me hizo muy mágica. Cuando yo vivía, 12. Grande, grande. Es uh, bueno vida. Es grande pipi. Yeah, yes, yes. Sí, gusanos comen muerto mucho tiempo. <laughs> Nod. <laughs> now, now nobody else knows what we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> What's that that <laughs> That's what you think. <laughs> uh, so, okay. The reason I don't really want to fully give in to being alive, returning fully undead, is... Is, uh, is because you have crippling anxiety when making decisions? It, yes. That is one of the reasons. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we have these mages that, you know, yeah, kind of stick magic to them, and the way I go about it is I just take it off of them. What... Turning fully on that changes it. Yeah, I, I just gotta suck it off. Gross. Oh, okay. <laughs> just yes, apologize. You know, a hand gesture look, here. Look, I'm, gesture I'm, I'm not going to yuck your yum if that's what you're into, but I'm just saying it's very inefficient. Okay, would it be more efficient if I was turned into a full undead? Well, of course it would be. Everything would be better if you were a full undead. You could even become a lich one day. Oh, excuse me. A... Oh God, what is this? He pulls out a card. Drew Ditch. Drew... Drew... One, one moment. He'll pull out a small pair of glasses. I put them Bitch. over his... his oh. He'll pull them over his eyeless skull. Imagine, like, Ozzy Osbourne, like, black circle sunglasses. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Casually eats a bat. Let's see, what, what is... I've been trying this new bat soup shit. Dra- a dra- a bat soup? A dra- drow marb? Drow marb? Drow marb? Dra- dra- whatever, it's... It's the druid version of me, a lich. Oh, that sounds... Oh. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I think the point is is that he, he he's able to make sure that the rest of the party doesn't explode, yeah, and yeah, that yeah. he doesn't explode he, naturally. So 
would becoming full undead make it so that everyone starts exploding a lot easier? You'd have to fucking handle your exposure. I... Well, that's the problem. I don't want to handle the exposure. I just wanted to, you know, lie around without causing any harm to me or these guys. Ugh. Well, I suppose if you literally have no ambition, sure, stay the way you are. But you asked me what would make it better. In my opinion, if you were completely undead, everything would be better. You'd have access to more potent abilities. You'd be able to learn more magic. And more importantly, in my opinion, you wouldn't have to worry about exposure anymore. In what sense would I not have to worry about exposure? Because you won't have to feed on it anymore because you're not a risen. The reason you have to feed on exposure is because the necromantic rituals that make you what you are are incomplete and done by an imbecile with the necromantic power level of a fucking toddler. If a proper necromancer, which would put the necromantic energy inside of you and then seal it properly so that it doesn't leak out every fucking where, you wouldn't have to eat it anymore to maintain your beautiful dead state. And, in addition to that, as your exposure increases, you'd be able to use it for its positive effects, and nothing happens when you hit the higher end. Now, you, no. you won't get the fancy apotheosis or whatever they fucking call it on Govanus, but you also won't have to worry about it as much. And the best part is that you can just expel it from your body quite easily. Boom. That's what I was trying to get to. But, you know, my lesser intellect. Not to uh, mention, kinda... you'd also be able to walk around with nice shiny bones instead of your weird block skin. I like my block skin. What? Yes, well. All right, you're ugly. On from this. <laughs> Fuck you. Oh my god, from this personal assault towards me. No, I don't want to be here with this we Jack probably, Skellington, all right? We could probably delve more into the other wings, I think. Yeah, uh, uh one last question. I doubt that. Uh, huh. d d you're right. Fuck. Uh, but on this topic. Uh huh. What was the order of uh, Matherius' party? Like, what, what? In what order did they all perish? Oh, the order of their deaths. Yeah. Uh... What the fuck? He just leaves. Did he uh... take a book with him? No, 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 he just, he just teleported just... over here. Oh shit. Okay. I don't know. I go up here. I'll look around now. He doesn't have to say teleport to do it. Uh, no, I don't. Watch. I can say this. You're an idiot. <laughs> Wait, is he level 20? Yeah, let's see. Oh, here we are. Everybody's more than that. You. And let me take a look here and see what we have. The Order of Metheria's Death. Blah, blah, blah. blah. Blah, blah, save everyone from the demons. Blah, 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 blah. Why doesn't anybody love me? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> My dad hates me. Blah, blah, blah. Probably because I burnt his house down. What a fucking teenager. Oh, my God. Endless effervescent witticisms with him. You'd think by reaching the ripe old age of 23, she would have learned that maybe, just maybe, not everything is everyone else's fault. Oh, yes, here it is. Um, nope, not yet. What? Oh, I didn't know that. I really should no. read about this Mytheria lady more often. Hmm. The answer to all of her problems was right there in front of her, and she didn't even see it. What an, in what a what an incredibly insepid sow she was. Let's see here. Rude. <laughs> He's, he's just shitting on her while reading them. I'm sorry. <laughs> Cornelius is my uh, is my character where my intrusive thoughts can come out. And he's he's got his own chat. He's 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 my chat. That's so good. <laughs> we love him. He's great. What an actual disappointment. 
<laughs> let's see here. I'm also getting it in front of me so I can answer you properly. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so... Their deaths were... The order of who died first and who died last? Yes. Okay. I think we know Black Hand died last, but the mm -hmm. rest were kind of ambiguous. Uh, so that would be... Well, this includes Metharia, too. Well, this is the order of which they would have died, not whether or not they were resurrected. She definitely died. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Wait, they were resurrected? Uh, kind of. Remember the whole succubus thing? There's the succubus thing. I lied, Cornelius. I have another follow-up question. And then there's the Black Hand. And what is going on with that? You want to get the Saints and Sinners stuff in there, Chrome, after the follow-up question, before we start touching Violet topics? <laughs> yeah. How are we going to yeah. die? Another guy. He's messing with some tear stuff. He doesn't quite know that, but... Oh, well. T other guy. All right. The colors died in the following order of Metharia's party. Are you ready? Yes. All right. They are... The order they died in were red, yellow, blue, green, indigo, orange, violet. All right. Follow up. Y yes. Uh, which order were they revived in? If there were. That information is not available except for the violet. Except for violet, mm -hmm. which is what's there, yeah. Okay. Uh, remember, the reason that she was quotations revived was that. The Violet returned all the souls that it Violet deathed. Mm. So if the others weren't Violet deathed, then they would not have been returned in that manner. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Which, there's a That's... hidden clue in there if you look hard enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. Uh, there's a little bit of an offhanded comment you meant there, said there a second ago. Before we go anywhere, you said there was an answer to all of our problems, which I'm assuming you're talking about the demon waste. Hmm? Oh, no, 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 no. Well, kind of. Uh, could you go over that? No. <laughs> Damn, that was harsh. <laughs> Was it all of our problems or all of her problems? Her, I think problems. All of her problems. Her problems, not your problems. I kind of don't care about her problems. Exactly. Frankly. Well, I mean, it's related to the demon. Look. <laughs> no, no, no. Look. Well, are, it, are we going to go to the I do, I do not want to walk point? into the trap infested, glyph exploding ridden conversation of her fucking pregnancy. All right? I don't want to deal with it. Huh? Hmm. Ah. Uh. Interesting. Oh. Big Black Fire doesn't, uh... He bones and doesn't talk about what happens afterwards. That's a pregnancy. Uh, no, I'm okay. kidding. I know what that is. You'll, you'll learn about it when you're older. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joshing you. <laughs> Nar isn't... What's a pregnancy? <laughs> Wait, are you insinuating that was you, or...? No, he's what? not. No, no. I'm... 
We just, just, the, I don't bone and then talk about it after. Foundation, the basis of my humor is feigned ignorance. I pretend not to know something and say, ha-ha, gotcha. Lie like that. We'll oh, talk about it later. Uh, hold, hold, about hold on. It. I'm, I'm going to make an insight check with Cordelius on that. <laughs> oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. All right. Um... Continue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That, was that all for um, Cornelius' questions? I guess. Besides the ones I have. Well, there's we we have a lot more, but I think they're more pertinent to other rooms in this yeah. place. I think there's my something that you are absolutely to pilot again. Yeah, so there's something about. that you absolutely need to know before we start touching on the enemy's color, then Ooh. I think. All right, so my refraction, apparently, I saw a little their steps in a, in a quote. It was, uh, well, you saw it. Well, I just saw it instead. It's, uh, I don't exactly want to say because it's uh, tear related stuff. I was just wondering what was that all about. Why? And in player knowledge, I'll say, why does it have all the campaigns in it? One of the great things about Tyr, my dear fellow, was even to my admittance, he is one of the greatest wizards that have ever been. But many are mistaken as to what his area of expertise was. It's true, he became quite accomplished, very much so, in many different fields. I would even dare say he might be a better necromancer than I am, and it is my entire focus. But the greatest field he had achieved, his true expertise, was divination. He was from what I could gather, cursed with a knowledge of a future so bleak that it led him to do terrible things, even by my recognition. If what you possess is some prophetic piece and it is associated with tear, then make no mistake, my friend. It is involved. And most likely, you, your compatriots, and their position has, well... All been predicted to some degree. And the great thread of the tapestry continues. It's whirling threads, bound but unseen by mortal kind. Uh, to answer you out of question, uh, out of character. So every campaign that I offer you guys has been one that has been pre written. Almost all of them have been pre written for several years. The, the, the players that take the slots are just the players in the prediction. Mm, okay. And that's that's a representation of past works through Tears' um, in-game representation of that. Because he was a diviner. Mm. Okay. His, his divination is so strong, he's seen the title of the adventure path is... Yes. Yeah. That's that's why mm. he speaks so much about what he's seen. That's why he knew the violet was coming. He knew what the violet was doing. And it's one of the few reasons uh, that he is able to keep his knowledge outside of iterations. It's because what he actually did is that, see, in each iteration he achieves that divination. And he is able to see the future of what his future selves learn. So that way, while most people have their progress completely reset, he doesn't. Because he sees the future of himself retaining that information because of that. And so he relearns it all again, much more quickly, and with an additional amount on top of that. I'll be right back. My food's here. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, though. That was a weird part. His food's here. I'm just kidding. Cornelius it was foreseen. Uh, Tears saw his food. Tears came. saw the food coming from a mile away. 
Uh, but that makes a lot of sense, though. I could have used that to get yeah. if I <laughs> think hard enough. <laughs> Even in the battle, he saw the initiative tracker, like the names of the initiatives and shit. Yeah. He's he's sort of in that like ephemeral zone of and doesn't follow the rules, does follow the rules. And that's the interesting thing is that you get that once in a lifetime chance of a hundred percent and a hundred percent, and suddenly we end up here. All right, I'm back. Also, Cornelius will mention the following. It is why that Tyr holds the title of Sage for Divination. Mm. Mm. That's all I wanted is to make the sure sages, I got that word. Does the Sages apply just to the nine paths of magic, or could you perhaps be a Sage of Rock Dimensions? Sage of throwing rocks hypothetically speaking the sages deal with the studies of magic as was dictated by the sage of nine paths himself they are titles given to archmages of archmages the most powerful of their forms and kind Tyr is the sage of divination do you have a record of the other sages Perhaps their interests and things. Any books on them in the other wing? Cornelius will take a long moment. It is precarious to access that information as they are one of the few entities that know when someone is studying them. But we can, if you wish. I do out of uh, just curiosity. They... Mostly to expand my horizon, not to dabble in that expanse, so to speak. I'm prepared if, for the, whatever repercussions, I guess, of my interest. I, sp I will speak honestly if... In, I, in either case. I do appreciate the, the warning. As you wish. Out of character. Yes. I have to prepare so much shit for you to ask about them. So. Yeah, I figure not not in the color, yeah. color wing. Um, when we got down most of our stuff, there's of the, there's uh, a lot that I think should be asked not here. But uh, what do you think, bro? Um, the, um, just like how we gain player knowledge, what was the factor that played in Moss player knowledge? How What was the uh, factor that he enter that sort of out of body experience that to me or Cornelius uh to you give me a second I gotta make a pee pee body poop poop body um take notes real quick You're talking about the stairwell thing, right? Yeah, oh, it kind of uh, connects together. I'm assuming that the cold and Elmas got it, so. It is a... It is an experience that Moss has had of one of your um, refractions. But if he was to gain that play knowledge once again, he would know what Chrome knows. Or... Mm-hmm. Oh. Is that some kind of way that you can naturally... In that way, naturally speak to each other? Mm. He wouldn't naturally. Not but. quite. You can attempt to that way. But I still decide when it happens. And you also don't know... If I'm talking about your current refractions or ones that have yet to be played. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I'm a tricksy little hobbit. Alright. 
you mentioned the uh, the nine again. Are those related to what was written of the seven? He referred to something as A9. Mm. Something with a brood. I imagine some kind of dragon or other fantastical creature. Well, it seems. No, there's, there's the nine as well. There's the challenge from the seven. Hmm. Oh, I know you're right. I think it was A9. It's a nine. Yeah. A nine is, a, is the name of a creature. Oh. Mm -hmm. I guess what is the importance of the numerical nine? We know eight and blow. There are many different numbers that hold different forms of power depending upon the numerology of them. For example, seven is obviously an incredibly potent aspect of numerical power. For obvious reasons. Nine is also represented as the number of continents, the number of schools of magic, so on and so forth. But weren't there eight continents? Ah, and now we enter something very fun. There, there are seven natural continents. The eighth one is a false one. And therefore is technically not a continent. At least to the Leylenic calculation of the natural world. Is there an, another false continent? Mm -mm. There's only eight. Oh, okay. I mean, you know what it is. It's conflux. Yeah. 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 I'm like. Yeah. We. I have more There you go. Remember the whole storyline of what conflux is actually there to do? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's a invader landmass. Which is a super cool concept. <clears throat> it took us forever to figure it out. <laughs> All right, I got a question. If there are numbers that hold power and everything, is that something I could learn about here? Or is that something I would learn about in some other room? Say that again, sorry. If numbers hold power, as you've mentioned with numerical power and all that, is that something I could learn here? Or would that yes. be something I could learn about in a different... Okay. I'll, t I'll tag along for that as well. Is that something we'd learn here? Hmm. Then my question would be, what are power numbers? They, like power words, have the magic of creation in them, the willful existence of it. Power words, however, cannot be invoked the same way that power words are, because power words represent direct will, whereas power numbers represent things that are built on top of will. They, they are the... If you want to look at it in this way, they are the foundation of creation is the numerology of it. So, for example, your birthday, because it literally represents you getting a natural 20, is a representation of the numerological, the, the power of numerology represented in the game. Your birthday as a player represents your character's birthday in a way, translated through that. That's why you get a natural 20 on your birthday. Oh yeah, birthday. I almost forgot. Today is mine also. <laughs> no, happy birthday. No, happy yes, birthday. Give me a fat bar. Happy birthday. <laughs> but that's, 
that's how that's represented. And the same thing, <laughs> is, and the same thing is true uh, over the whole like concept of the game. You know, that's why seven is a powerful number because it represents the seven, right? And mm, that is actually okay. one of the reasons why the seven are so powerful is that they are the unique instance in which a power word and entity actually became a sentient foundation of creation. The seven are a representation of an entity that manifests a power word, but also a, numeral, a numerological power that also activates. That's why they are potentially more powerful than any other god, is because of that. Winky face. Mm. Hmm. Huh. You wanna... Do you wanna crack open the, the violet color, Craig? Oh, this, this is making sense hey. to you guys, right? This is some pretty... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. These are pretty big lore drops, so... I am something. absorbing. <laughs> I, I'd, like, I'd like to ask a shard of oblivion question. Would you guys cool? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Shoot go ahead. Her. Shoot it. Okay. So, the examples of the Shards of Oblivion were always in reference to it containing a memory, but every use of it was always utilitarian, like a level up or the items and things. How would one go about accessing the memory within the Shard? You must wield the power of the Violet to do that. As that is its domain. That is how. Mm -hmm. Wielding the power, is that being of the color? As in getting a seventh player and becoming the violet of that seven? That's certainly the easiest way to do it. It is not the only, mm -hmm. however. All right, I have another dangerous question. Do you mind if I chuck this one on top, Craig? I, I mean, we're, <laughs> we're rolled okay. We're doing so this. <laughs> okay. So a the violet broken was oblivion, uh, all knowing. What is the violet when it is? rejoined with the prism. Mm. <clears throat> One second. I, uh, in my head canon, hope and oblivion were aspects of a broken piece of the prism. Therefore, the light was all fucked up. But if the light isn't fucked up, what does the violet represent? Yeah. So, <clears throat> each of the colors have a representation of what domains of creation and existence that they represent. The violet represents two things in and of itself. And that is <clears throat> the concept of exceptions and memory itself. When all is working correctly, that is the role that the violet takes. That is its uh, its job, for lack of a better word. Exceptions and memory. Exceptions and memory. It is by that concept of exception that leads it to being the color that even could betray the other colors, but it is also the aspect of the color that allow those, such as the seven, 
to become the embodiment of hope. Because hope is an exception to the hopeless, to despair, to destruction and failure. Hmm. At least that's how it's translated to the mortal mind. Makes sense. That makes me want to ask about all the other meanings for the colors. <laughs> Go right ahead. Do you guys want the full list? Would that be good? Might as well, if that's what you want to ask. Yeah, seems fine. Yeah. What do the rest of the colors mean, then? Their meaning's the same, because they weren't broken. Yo, yeah, but I can just go over them in case you guys don't know. Sure. <clears throat> the indigo scar represents death's edge, trial, and challenge. The blue cross represents the dream and reflection upon that dream. It is where innovation and wisdom hail from. The green triangle is life and abundance in all its forms. The yellow, uh, the yellow square is time, responsibility, preparedness. The orange star represents ambition, the willingness to act, and the willingness to sacrifice what is necessary to achieve that ambition. The red, the red star, represents the unity of all into one, that many hands might make light work and that creation itself has its blueprint. And then the violet star. Hmm. <clears throat> there we go. When I... Knock yours out, Craig. Uh, we uh, oh, open uh, the sausage patty. Yeah, I know that we're a little less worried about it. Oh, the sausage um, patty. What is the uh, the nature of a the violet or not the <clears throat> the shattered eyes? Yeah, what the fuck? Dude? <laughs> my bad, my bad. Man, I was about to shoot you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, already guns cocked and everything. Wait, where where is the violet right now? <laughs> why, why are you running? I'm why are you? Violet again. <laughs> <laughs> Getting. Don't do that. Down. Right. Down, Chrome. What is your actual <laughs> question, Greg? What What is the nature of the shattered eyes? During the Violet Arc, those that were blessed with the Violet Eye were actually blessed with knowledge. Knowledge of a color. The other colors hid themselves from the world because those that would become blessed, they knew ultimately would destroy them, even the quotations more positive ones. Something you have to remember is that the colors are one of the entities above good and evil, even law and chaos to a certain extent. They are what they are, and they are a requirement for existence to be. However, that being the case, it is those with the violet that accessed memory and exception. So those with the violet could fall under the exceptional rule, the exception to the rule. So if hope was wielded by the seven to combat the violet, then those that became its servant wielded the opposite of hope. 
the truest form of despair. Nihilism. Those that would throw away anything else and see it all be destroyed for no other purpose than its destruction. Those that were burdened with violet eyes were actually those that were burdened to see. And those that could see were either the seven or those that saw without having their eyes burned were also referred to as cardinals. In this regard, the shattered eyes represent the remnants of such a thing. For knowledge still lingers within our world of the colors and their prismatic presence. Still, even in the mundane and seemingly innocuous forms, it still exists. It still lingers, waiting, watch, watchful. The shattered eyes are a representation of those that have glimpsed knowledge that would have fallen into the um, into the domain of one of the colors and indeed the first step to attaining a cardinal sight you, you were asking about the shattered eyes of like Thorn and Caspian and not the shattered eyes of like Mad Mork well I guess those would be Ma the same Ma in either case. Yeah, so I guess they're they're the same. Just uh, shattered is more towards any color, while the violet is more specific to obviously the violet, right? Well, that's not quite what I said. The shattered eyes are a representation of those that have seen prismatic knowledge. The prism is sealed again, and the colors are operating as they're supposed to. So these effects are not quite so intense, as per my previous explanations. Mm. But a shattered eye is the first step towards a cardinal sight. Hmm. Oh, I got a prompt to <clears throat> this could wrap things up. Question: um, I want to ask about how how. How was Oaken Shield tricked into thinking that the Violet was defeated? Was there a ceiling, a quote-unquote ceiling of a prism that happened then? Do you think that's a good question to ask? Are you asking it? I'm throwing it out there. We're not going to stop you. Yeah. Honestly, mean, at this point, uh, if, if, if Stop me if you have the inkling to. <laughs> I will stop I don't, you I don't if really... I feel like you will explode. Uh, okay, yeah, cool. go ahead. Read your books. I, I will ask that then. Uh, can you ask it again, please? When the seven of, I believe, the fourth with Oak and Shield were tricked into believing that the Violet was defeated, did they go through a process of sealing the Violet in a prism? Or did they stop before that? They stopped before that. Okay, cool. Um... I guess we could finish up with the other parts of my questions. Uh, what yeah. is the relation between the reminders and the shattered eyes? The reminders are the manifestations of prismatic power that are drawn to the reminder uh, that are drawn to the shattered eyes, as the cardinals or those with cardinal sight can see prismatic power. And can see well can see a lot of things other than that, but yeah, they're attracted to them, for they represent a reminder of what that knowledge is. Is so, good? the reminders, okay. the reminders are a failsafe, an additional one, 
employed to prevent the misuse of prismatic power. Is it a good question to ask about if we have any on Conflux? I mean, Corvinus, sorry. <laughs> no, we know of two or three. Yeah, right? we know of two. Uh, uh, out three. of character. Yeah, we, we know three. still have a Shattered Eye? Yes. Um. Just because she's blind doesn't mean her eye isn't still shattered. And, yeah, it, there was the and interest... it also means that her sight is not... I do wish you... That her potential for cardinal sight has not been denied to her. That's cool. I guess it's one of those, like... You know, it, if one of them dies, we all die. But also, like, we can't really care about that because we can't really do anything about that. Other than killing them ourselves, but yeah. Yeah, we can end, but like... Realistically speaking, it's kind of out of our purview to do anything about that. I got another question. Yeah, what's up? So, uh, Violet Death got mentioned and everything. And I know as a player from previous Violet Arc, there are other types of color deaths. Yes? Absolutely. I'm, I'm trying to think of how I would word that, because the first thing that came to mind was like, how dangerous are they by comparison? Answer, very, because they're colored deaths. Can I interject? Yeah. Is it still possible? It's actually fair. Well, we know the um, what their colors reminders. and their and their jobs, so we can assume that a certain color death is uh what they represent, like time, like the yellow square. Ah, uh, dying time to time. Is, your time is taken away, or whatnot. That's just an well, assumption. Now that there, there, there was precedent for green and indigo death, as, as mechanically speaking. But yeah. now that they're sealed, is there still the possibility for chromatic death? Effectively, yes. Okay. There are those that possess the capacity even now in Corvanus. I bring that question up because I want to know about the certain chromatic deaths due to the fact that some of us are wanting to look into amber and some of us are wanting to look into the color green. I'm attempting to learn what I can as preparation. Was that a question? I need to figure out how to word it into a oh, better okay, question. Okay, I was like, it's like, how how do I ask? Well, I, okay, you, I'm trying to learn any, about the chromatic deaths. I, I guess is there any um, text here about the um, mechanical implementations of invoking a color? How would one even start to go about doing that? All right. Green, that's a good green, green that's a good amber, way. and violet. Listen well. First of all, amber is not one of the colors. Amber, amber is a hue. Is a hue. Um, it's a powerful a hue. Yellow, yellow, I guess. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm going to say this in a way that will be vague. Understand that I cannot clarify. Hmm. Okay. For you to gain access to a to the chromatic power of a color, you need to know it exists out of character, know it exists in character. You must have been able to see it in character, or witness it is the better word. Witness it in character. Access it in character through various means that exist. And then finally, submit yourself to it. 
Okay. That makes me think of um, the numer num numerology in the sense of like power numbers. Of you can't simply yeah. invoke four. You need to be in a four situation that Correct. four calls forth from. That is a very good way of looking at it, yes. So, um, quick question. Would that mean that druids would have far more easier access to the green, seeing as they're literally following a no. path called the green? No. No. Does, does the druidic path being called green uh, mean something chromatically? Yes. Huh. Well, life abundance in all its forms. Well, well I'm. I can see. I'm interested in um, our words, and I think if Nar is as well, um, there could be like a congruency there in terms of um, using one instead of a manual switch for the mini library and more library stuff in general if we have things that aren't chromatic related we could probably go to another wing i'm down to start there just out of personal interest but <coughs> um mm -hmm. if we want to go to you know the fucking fiend terrarium like <laughs> oh uh, and twilight actually... was wanting to learn about green which is why i brought that up so, well i've i've the... learned enough about green to know what I think of it. Um, speaking of, we, we, we brought up a chromatic death, so actually I'm a little curious. Uh, the reminders we mentioned doing have something called voided. Uh, is this like removing one's hue or color? Yes. Oh. Hmm. Which, seeing is as... That uni So, the reminders have the capacity to devoid somebody, which removes their color. Which, the absence of all color is... Black, so death. Yeah. Okay. Don't let that happen to you. Yeah. Alright. Hmm? Uh, I think that's most of the chromatic stuff. I mean, other than... Oh, no, that's basically explained. Hmm. If we are, to... if we are considering leaving this room to go <coughs> to another, uh, if everyone's got what they needed here, may I request, uh, Mr. Cornelius, that we can swing by the previous room we were in and have a look at refractions one more time? I mean, I, I guess, but. Bear with me. One of my refractions was dead, and you mentioned that uh, she had almost faded all the way? Well, what I meant was is that she's in you. Yes, but, but knowing me, I probably have some big convoluted plan to accomplish something, and it would I'd be remiss if I didn't give her the opportunity, I mean me, the opportunity to do whatever... I'm doing in that dead That's body. already happening, is what I'm saying. Oh. Yeah. The well, what's your deal with resurrecting people? Do you, do you understand that people die and go away? That's a part of life. Well. It very much weak, is a part of life. Weak people. It's <laughs> very much people, not. People that don't have impressive arcane might, of course. <laughs> uh, and the poor. The poor, the, the poor tend to die and stay dead because they're poor. People with things to do. You're don't not stay poor, good. are you? No. Me? Yes, you with the orange fucking hair. <laughs> Sadly, my pockets are nearly empty. Oh no. But I am not poor. I don't believe you. And he will oh. lean back in his chair. I'm sure you are perfectly capable of having a look at my home. Mm. Hmm, actually, that's a good idea. <laughs> He just looks into his hand. <laughs> yes, quite impressive, isn't it? Oh. Oh, no. What? Oh, is it on no. the siege? 
Oh, there's a funeral. There's a. Oh, a, a what? There's I'll a go funeral. in and look in his hands. Oh, never standing mind. Standing on the table. He closes what? his hand. What funeral? Who? <coughs> there's a funeral at your estate. He'll lean back, closes his hands or behind his head. We can assume it's we know who. It's you. I wonder which one of your friends died, or family members. Hmm. Somebody wanted me dead. I wonder if they're faking it. Probably go resurrect them or something. Oh, he... Ha-ha! <laughs> ah, uh, you... He points at Marlo. You... You have a funny bone. <laughs> uh, Mar Marlo will smile. Uh fights it back, and then give him a finger gun. Laza will tap you on the shoulder excitedly. You've made a new friend, Marlo! I told you you were oh, likable! <laughs> oh, God. God. Almost. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> snicker at that. Hmm. What, what about you, Laza? Do you have any questions here? You kind oh, of I, I, I actually do have one. Pardon me, but Mr. Cornelius, yes, you actual soy elephant. I'm not sure what that means, but what of the Cyclops? Soy elephant. Surely their impact has lingered since. Ah, that is true. The tale of the Cyclops is a difficult one, and I can understand your interest. Oh, very fucking well. I'll move over with your ammo he'll, book. He'll start getting ready to fucking spill the beans. I'm just going to rip the band-aid off and... The ba band-aid? Bandage. The bandage off. The Cyclops are gone. All of them. Every single one of them. Laza will look very sad at that. I am sorry. I can understand your connection to them. And then Laza will ask, So Zetor did not survive? He did, but he was already old, by which old things count as old. I am afraid that he left the world, the waking realm, and went to the dream, as all things that are old must do. Well, things that aren't beautifully undead, of course. But, the Vega people are alive and well. They have returned to Angolosh, and they have begun to build themselves up once more. And indeed... There's even, from the last that I saw, they have restarted to rebuild their amber. I'd show you it myself, but I can't see it because of amber. Laza will nod. And what of the minotaurs? Did... Are they well? The ones that traveled with you to that backwater continent, I am afraid, are all dead. But the others are doing just fine. In fact, one of them was recently elected to quite the potent position in Kale. Really? A merchant lord, yes. Uh, Horns, Hornsworth, or some stupid fucking name like that. But they're doing pretty well. In fact, many of them are turning towards business and leaving the uh, their, their warrior culture a little bit behind. Not that they've forgotten it, of course, but... Well, Calcatesh is changing. I hope that gives you some peace. Thank you, sir. It does. Although, I do have a question. If the Cyclops are gone, and the Vega are not, and Amber is still alive, then... I do have one question. One that has been burning in my breast since I've stood before you. Cornelius will respond, Sorry, I'm not into elephants. No... N 
no, no. I have a different question than that. And then he's like, oh, fine. I didn't want you to ask it anyway. My question, um... You mentioned that there are some on Corvanus that are capable of this chromatic death. This semblance of power. Who, who are they? Surely we should know who they are if we are going to continue to dance with this... Well, death. Cornelius will smile. That is a something that I cannot tell you directly as the act of telling you may distort your futures. I can tell you this, that of them, two are amongst you. Laza will stroke his trunk. I, I see. of what again? I wasn't... Huh? <laughs> <I don't... laughs> He's what a bandit? Huh? Who am I? <laughs> nice argument. I wasn't listening. I'm a bandit. I'm a bandit. I'm a risen. I'm, I'm a real... communications. I'm a real boy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did you really no, not hear I, anything I no, just I, said? <laughs> no. I was... I, we missed... I didn't catch what I know what something's amongst us, but oh, uh, um, there the t two of those mentioned that are capable of chromatic death are amongst you, as gotcha. as in the party. Mm. Oh, yes. He he can't tell us because I would fuck with destiny. <laughs> he cannot tell you specifically. No. Because it's not it's probably gruel when I shove the shard in his fucking neck after he shows him being an acorn. <laughs> Maybe it's both of you. You both just self destruct in that moment. Maybe Marlo should stop keeping weird rocks in his pants. I mean, my pants is my asshole. Oh. I too like to store things where my pelvic anus used to be. I bet you do. I sure do. This. Is, is right, I'm, I'm feeling weird in this section. <laughs> yeah, please. I, I, I posted okay, a, sure. a new batch of... <laughs> I posted a new batch of uh, shit to be productive about. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You, bat he, you, you weren't expecting someone to match your flow? Is that what you mean? No. Man, no. <laughs> Says something put, gay. Put my, also put is my gay. Put uh -oh. dog down. <laughs> <laughs> Ninanoth just walked up to me. Did you, did you want to say uh, something? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was. Yeah, Jesus. Let me regain <laughs> myself real quick. <clears throat> oh, Twilight. I, I think you're going to have to learn something. Resurrection has a cost. As he gestures to himself. My return It's about 5,000 not... gold. I could probably oh, scrub that up. Yeah, sorry, go ahead with your deep talk. He's going <laughs> to talk about his mom and shit. Right. No. Don't. I miss my mother. She was very kind. Hmm. Mine is not. No one cares. <laughs> also, you don't have one anymore. Oof. <laughs> I was. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> mm. Well, anyways. Mm. I, I please, was... please continue. Mm. I'm sorry. <laughs> I will sort of miss her, I guess. Maybe. Mm. All right. None, nonetheless, uh, returning one from the dead, especially when not done fully, as such as me. Chrome and Swig cost someone greatly. Takes from them and remakes them into something new. I worry 
that many of the methods we might look through will endlessly have some kind of cost that you think is worthy for them to pay. I want you to know just... This is not a life most will find worth living. I fear that many of the Risen, once this war is finished, will find their hungers and interests change and wane as a new eternity views them. Just... I only ask that you know that when he left, however he left, that he might have been happy to know that you got away and you were able to live. Maybe that's all he needed. I... I, I hear what you're saying. And I know it comes from a position of caring. But it should have been him. And it should have been neither of us. And I'm going to keep looking. Because I think, even though what you're saying and what Mr. Cornelius has said, it's all a matter of finding what the balance of the cost is. If it takes making both of us risen and then waiting several generations and then finding a way to be alive again, maybe that's what it takes, but... And what if the cost is against his own will? I... You would have spent generations waiting, hoping to find a solution, only to find that it was wasted time. For you to care about him so much, he must have been a wonderful person. He must have had family of his own at one point. And what little I know of my ancestors. I have given up my chance to lay with them, to rest soundly with them. And this is a sacrifice I am opposing upon myself. So you're really telling me that if you had the opportunity, if you had the opportunity to bring them back, you wouldn't take it? No. Because I know. Not during our travels, we came upon a place uh, uh, known as a cairn. And surrounded by the dead of warriors, and during my time laying there, uh, I was able to, in a way, understand that they're okay. They're moved on. Even my father would die the death I would not wish on anyone. He was able to find peace. Perhaps we can find such a place for you. Mr. Nenanoth, I'm I am happy that you have found closure and and know that they are in fact dead for real and in a better place, but my mentor is currently part of some horrible flesh and bone amalgamation creature prowling the streets of the Pale City. That is I have no guarantee that he is at peace. We can find it. 
or we can put him to rest. We can do so many different things. But I think your fixation on resurrection is going to cause you more pain than you know. My ideas for my mother was always to make sure that in the end that she finds peace. She is sick and she has done things I do not believe she will ever be able to give forgive herself for, even if we cure her curse. And if she wishes peace, I will give it to her. Forgive me if my definition of peace differs from yours. And I'm... It don't your misunderstand peace. me. I'm grateful for your enthusiasm in trying to encourage me or find a, a secondary alternate path. And I've thought about them. I have, but... I have to have something to drive me because if I have nothing to drive me, then I should have been dead instead of him. You were simply assuming that this is the only thing that could move you forward. But, in that, I guess you were a bit more like Tellery than I thought knew. <laughs> it's not enthusiasm. It's wisdom. And usually, uh, he doesn't speak much of it, but you should listen. Your, your aspirations are... Uh, one, one, I generally don't give a shit about them, but what you are doing is just selfish. For someone who doesn't give a shit, you awfully, often, often join these conversations. I understand the stance of you and your peers. Do you really? Yes, you've mentioned it over and over. I'm back. N Perhaps no, you don't we grasp, haven't. Perhaps you he, don't grasp He just mine. brought this up. No, I, I have been in that situation, and I've grasped it, and Gruel has as well. And he's given it to you in a very wise and succinct manner. Both of you sound to me like you've given up. No. There are ways to solve the problem, and you have decided, no, oh... We'll just give them peace. We'll there is no the way. You, you, you are Twilight. not resurrecting. You are not resurrecting your master. You're resurrecting what your master was to you when he was alive. It is selfish. Then maybe I'm selfish. Twilight, I need you to That's understand fair. this. And I say this with all that it means and the pain that it held. My mother cannot undo the fact that she killed her own husband. There is no magic trick in the world that will undo the fact that she did such a thing. And if she cannot handle that, even upon returning to her senses, and she wishes simply to lay... lay down and accept that, I will do that for her. And you may find that your mentor was happy with the fact that he, what he did saved you. He didn't. I was just faster. Uh, Gruel, I think your wisdom might be falling on deaf ears. But I do have a question now that you bring this up that I've been thinking about. Uh, why not get rid of the Risen Curse? Why not be alive again? Yes, I've been wondering that as well, actually. Good, good change of topic. I chose this because we have something we must do. And every day we go forward, I learned that there was more and more that's expected of us. And this form is more capable than my previous one. It is a tool. I understand what it means to wield it, what I have to give up, and I do not cherish it. Mm. 
Well, perhaps we should spend the rest of the time here. We should move on to a different wing and figure out what we can do and what we should do. We have the bits and pieces of what we can do, but I don't know what we should do at this point. No, this is... Now that I've got my temper up, I think this is best to do now. Well, I still have the courage to do so. Go, Neelis. Are you there? Mm -hmm. Yes, what? I wish to finalize my transformation. In oh, my you form. wish to become a beautiful dead? I only ask, is there some way for me to, even if it's not my own, hold life within myself still? To oh, oh my God. <laughs> I mean, you you put your mother in you or the, something. Yeah, just, just zap him. Just zap him. Then he's gonna talk I'm not to going you. to do this if you're going to be a little bitch about it. Hmm. We going full Freud in here? What? Never Who's mind. that? Ign ignore my peanut gallery banter. You have peanuts? Why aren't you sharing that? Yes, no. where are my peanuts? <laughs> I have 82 cigarettes, though, if you like. <laughs> Actually, yes. Throw me one of those coffin nails. <laughs> Marlo will toss one. He'll catch it, and then he'll... Perfectly. He'll just fucking light it with a cantrip. He has no lips, so he just kind of... He sticks it in his teeth. Just clicking his teeth? <laughs> I'm, I'm staying at the library, guys. I'm sorry. He will cast reverse gust of wind <laughs> into his body to drain the smoke. So what's it gonna be, lover boy? He says, slightly adding an accent. You gonna become dead or not? I ain't got time to be wasting on somebody that don't got their shit together. He'll eat the cigarette. Mm, <laughs> delicious. I think probably Good amongst brand. this group, I have the most shit put together, but nonetheless, yes. Do what you need to do. Finally! Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> He'll crack his knuckles together. <clears throat> He'll summon spotlights. <laughs> He'll kick you over here. <laughs> All right, it's time to make a choice, my dear friend. All right. Make him a bitch first and then do it. That'd be pretty funny. <laughs> da, 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 time to choose your undead form and then it'll be really nice and it you um whatever, just choose one. Alright. You get to choose what kind of undead you wanna be. Isn't that great? Nice. <laughs> no. All right, let's go through your fucking options, shall we? First things first, do you want to have any flesh on your body, or would you like the proscuity of purity of bone? Uh, flesh. Why? Why does everyone always choose flesh? It's so stupid! Why do you want gross-looking flesh just flopping around on top of you when you could be pristine, clean, <laughs> thin? Hmm? Do you want to be thin? Maybe the girls will actually give you the time of day if you had a proper bone to give them. <laughs> don't, don't you still have skin? No, that's coloring. Oh, well, fair enough. Do you don't not, li do you not like my rouge? Hmm? You have a problem with a man wearing makeup? No, actually... Good! <laughs> so you want flesh, then? Yes. All right. Let's see what else we have here. Flesh. All right, all right. Ooh, a cadaver lord. No, a mummy. Ooh, maybe you'd cry to your fucking mummy. Let's see. No, no. 
No, not that one. I, I take it you're going to want to use that crossbow. Uh, preferably? <sighs> Fine, then I'll probably need to get one of the ones that retain their martial skills, don't I? You, of course, chose to go with flesh, so I cannot make you incorporeal, because that would be too fucking convenient. Uh, so many options. Then. I guess I guess I could just make you a white. Hmm, that's an option. I can't make you a wraith. That's too cool. Ah, just. A straight up zombie. I could just go classic old school. Hmm. Yes, I could do that. Ooh, a revenant. Ooh. I could do that. Um, anything night that has to do oh, with. Oh, a nightshade is a fine choice. Hmm. <laughs> Lich. Ha! <laughs> Imagine being even close to me. <laughs> Ghoul? Ah, maybe. Is it your... What was your name again? Uh, Gruel. <laughs> Gruel the Ghoul! <laughs> yes. Um, I've been uh, looking to take up like a pet or animals or some kind what there's an option with that uh, <clears throat> i've been trying to become like a beast tamer anything that's related to that you want to be a beast tamer and you want to be dead well we're what animals. is wrong with you <laughs> don't ask that question do you understand <laughs> do you understand how this works you're going to be better than being alive and you want to bring around a living creature to what Take care of? Really? Yeah, preferably. Why would you want a dependent when you're going to get all of the sexy freedom of death? Um, because it's not really the thing I want. It's more of a tool. So then don't do it. <laughs> I... Whatever. I... You do what you want. I don't care. I'm not summoning you a, an undead beast to serve you, though. That's for sure. Even though it would be really easy for me to do so. I am not going to do it. Because, quite frankly, I... I don't really have a reason. I guess I can do you it. just become undead and buy a Dalmatian or something? I think he would. First of all, if he's going to get a dog, why would he... Why would he get the screaming mental insecurity of a fucking Dalmatian? That's like they buying destroy that's, everything. That's like buying a poodle and because you think it makes you fancy. Yeah, but it fit the vibe. You know. Had a Dalmatian. Oh, once. you're you one of those people that believe times. in vibes. Oh my goodness. You're lucky that you're a servant of Ezekine, or else I would write you off instantaneously. Okay, what do we have here? Is it... I think breakfast is pretty cool undead. Yes, and you also think that horse helmet is cool as well. It is. Right? <laughs> yeah, look at him. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> Silence. <laughs> Everyone else is quiet. <laughs> Gu look, he's much more guys? handsome underneath it, I'm just saying. Guys. All right, here's your options. All things. Okay. <laughs> no, you'd need more on top anyway. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> Your choices are white, zombie, revenant, ghoul, or nightshade. What's a nightshade? A nightshade is a undead creature whose flesh is night. A flower. <laughs> An undead flower. Just a flower. He makes you into a little flower. Not a face perfectly. Um, Miss Nock, where are you in her hair? Please ignore the toddler-level yeah. intellects trying to speak right now. 
Dirty. Uh, any any key points on each one of them? Yes, the nightshade will give you various uh, powers over cold and shadows and darkness, and it's very edgy. Um, Ghoul will give you the ability to paralyze people when you bite them, and it also has a couple of other nifty animalistic like oh animals you want animals ghoul's a good one for you you can take on their aspects if you want and maybe even i don't know summon a wolf or something uh there's the revenant which is probably the most difficult one but it has quite a lot of potency in it however it requires you to hate someone so do you have anyone that you hate a lot himself <laughs> <laughs> not in part Particular. I see. Well, then probably not that one. There's the classic zombie. Very good. It's the most basic form, but don't let that fool you to its strengths. It has the most, I guess you could call it, potentiality of the undead. A zombie can be almost anything. Just like you could have been anything. Instead, you chose to be a halfway undead little nascent whiner that uses a crossbow. There's also... Damn. There's also the white. It's a militaristic undead. Very reliable, if a bit unimaginative. It should fit you perfectly. What cool tricks can they do? They retain their martial effects. Their undead state doesn't lower it. And they also possess a... a, a, a kind of rage to them. It's, um... It's like they can burn the necromantic energies within for a momentary state of heightened combat acuity and other such things. And the uh, ghoul, you said it was more attuned with, I guess, animals in some sense? Well, Animalist. te technically a ghoul can make anything else into a ghoul. A ghoul is a virulent form of undeath. So you could find a dog, I guess, and bite it, and then it becomes a ghoul dog, and then it, I guess, loves you? I, I don't know. He could be Gruel the Ghoul with his pet Grudel. Oh, no. Oh, I hate it, but I love it. <laughs> he, he'll he turn around and look at Marlo and say, Keep it up. That's two <laughs> to zero. That's two we'll to zero. Off. That's two yeah. to zero so far. He's almost there. Gotta check this shit. He's becoming a Cornelius. Uh, uh, I hmm, biting really isn't my thing. I think I'll go with the when you when you speak of potential of the zombie, does it mean that you can change it or? Well, the thing it? about thing about zombies that make them so cool is. It's kind of like going to the undead casino, and you've got a pair of hot, sexy sixes waiting at the end that's going to get you the big payday. So you would cast the zombie spell, and then most of the time it can be nothing at all, just bullshit. But sometimes you get that, spectra, that special ag mixture of ectoplasm, maggots, rotted flesh, and my personal favorite grave tongue. You get all that together and you get quite the spicy outlook. Uh, out of character mechanics, it's randomized. It has the highest potency of cool things, but it's all random. You don't know what you're going to get. Hmm. Want to be random? You want me, you want that to be augmented? Do you want to Hash, hashtag totally random? Black roll guy. the scene, kid. Oh God, I, I roll usually I never say roll, but I feel like this is the one time we should roll. Oh, you want a gamba? You want that augmented? I'm just kidding. I don't know. Hmm. Do You're you? being like so random right now. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you want? Uh, you want to fill the gamble? <laughs> no, you can keep your dice to yourself. Uh, I tried. Where do you talk about leaving them behind? Yeah, can we do something about that? Not, not we, but like... Can you? Can I buy those off you? <laughs> hey! Blackhead! Throw me another one of those coffin nails! <laughs> Am I, am I a blackhead? Yes! 
Obviously, you're the only one with black hair. <laughs> oh shit, I am. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no. no. Cool. Did you get, I'm bald. Get brown, Mar Marlo, will, Marlo will toss a dart at him. Smoke. Cornelius will light that sucker up. All right. We'll go with zombie. Oh! Very good. Uh. All right, time for me to finally get to have a little bit of fun. Oh, 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 oh yes. Mm, I'm gonna have. Oh, here we go. Now it's time to cast the most powerful of spells. I hope you're ready for what's coming next. Oh, yeah. <laughs> get ready. It's about to get funky in here. Wait, should we be doing this in this room, or should we do? Should we go to another room? Oh well, yeah. now that the music started, we Cornel can't leave. Cornelius starts jamming. Get cocked, you fucking boaters! All right, here we go. Get this. Get all my things together. Let me. It's so random. Yeah, could I get a could I get a little half leg in the window and walk just you know a little closer to me? I don't know. Can you fucking ask me a question oh, instead of meow, 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 like that? Yes. Just because you have lips yeah. doesn't mean you have to show them off. Yeah. That's some so half leg in her in her plans. And now please stand next to me so that I can rub off my luck on you. Yes, of course. Yeah. Hey, my power is your power. Don't. <laughs> Oh, you think she's going to matter? Sorry, <laughs> red-headed luck doesn't work over here. I don't think you've have <laughs> gingers. <laughs> what, what, if you, what if you cut off a halfling's foot and wore it like on your belt? Would that then you'd be fucking you weird. Luck? That'd be a big foot. That's not. That's not how halfling <laughs> luck works. It's all in the hair. Well, technically speaking, it's um, wet. Hmm, I'm in mixed company. I probably shouldn't say that. Let's what? just say having your bone polished by a halfling leaves a lot of luck behind, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but no, them cleaning your skeleton helps. Mm. Oh, also, create undead! <laughs> <laughs> cleaning a skeleton. <laughs> Alright. Let's roll. All right, we're looking for big, crazy numbers. If we were to scalp a bunch of halflings, hypothetically speaking, we could have, like, items of halfling luck. You could make a lot of uh, heroism potions, from what I hear. All That's right, nice here we go. Set ingredients or halflings? Who's ready for Halfling hair? Ooh. Ooh. Uh, oh god. No, it's really low back and back. really high. That's a good we, thing. We back to back again. Back to back. Oh. Oh. Jesus. You're in something. We're going up. No. Oh. We're going up. <laughs> oh, we're going up. He's going to be a regular <laughs> drooling zombie. Nice. 16 now. <laughs> nice. Bro, I hit all the neurons on that one. <laughs> Oh my god, dude, hold on. This is actually going to take me a minute. That's a lot. No, he doesn't want to be augmented. Okay, I get it. Yeah. Fine, don't take my black dye. Yeah. I'll use it for myself. You're, you're getting the Ben and Jerry's mystery flavor. <laughs> Gender swap becomes a witch from Left 4 Dead. Long, pointy claws. I want titties. Yeah. <laughs> Half of Chris one of it's gone. Chris, I have like eight. <laughs> Cornelius, can I have like ten boobs, please? I promise this is for science. <laughs> <laughs> for scientific purposes, yes. I know, for, 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 heads. Heads. <laughs> for so, academic purposes. Fuck, dude. 
<laughs> is he cool or weird or both? You have eight heads. It's like, hey, mom, do you want to see my eight porn? See the kids. This is why you. Does he have one of those cool open rib cages where we can now see his still beating heart? I mean, I still got he the has... axe wound in my chest. That didn't heal. He has flesh, but now he is entirely transparent. Do I need to put him down? Pulls out Glaive. Uh, I won't say no. Uh, well, mm, I didn't hear a no. You can, borrow a, <laughs> you can borrow a shirt for the axe wound. It's from J. Crew. It's a nice. Good fit. <laughs> God. Concerned I laughter. <laughs> you shopped at J. Crow. They're false selections. Nice. <laughs> it is actually. Hmm. You get around, Mister Marlowe. I like to accentuate my features. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like Cornelius is going all out on this one. He's channeling. I mean, he did say the most potential for random cool stuff to happen. Dude, this is fucking crazy. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm caught in a fucking war flashback of being in middle school with girls being like, that's so random. Oh my god, he's so <laughs> random. And that's just playing in my head just <laughs> over and over. Alright, um... Yeah. Like two U.S. visits in a row, where everything was random, and then they stopped. All right, listen up to me. Uh, you know, I'm just gonna type it out. <laughs> Please and thank you. Re re remove all risen effects from your character. You are instead this. I put it in notes. This just happened. Tells me this man no longer an orc <laughs> or an undead. Well, he's undead, all right. You have now become a blob, a blob of flesh and bone. Oh, hey, a melted one. Hey, 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 hey uh, kill it. <laughs> kill it now. No, glaive, glaive. <laughs> By the light of ears. Fuck. Our security weapons hold no power here. Yeah. And I love when other people do this to themselves. I can watch. <laughs> Note to self do not hand uh, Blackfire a cigar before he casts the priest's dead spell. <laughs> yeah, imagine a cigar. That's so much thicker than a cigar. <laughs> you, you put him in the zone. Now they're willows. <laughs> Flick the Marillo. Marillo. <laughs> oh, don't look at that. 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 Close your eyes. 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 Don't look. All right. I, I, I minimized it. You're good. Did you look? You you read it, didn't you? I, I, got, I caught the name. Okay. I luckily have notes that I was still writing, which covered up... Pretty much everything. I only see double lines. I can't read while somebody's talking to me, so Arcadium being don't look, don't look, don't look was <laughs> effective. It just like wiped my mind clean. Oh, my eyes, they saw nothing. You're actually hurting <laughs> me. This is like putting a red button in front of my face and just saying, Don't don't touch it. Don't touch it. <laughs> don't, don't do it. Yeah. Just sit in there, waiting for you to press it, but don't. Hmm. Jesus Christ. 
<laughs> He's still typing. He's still is, typing. Is Grill is Grill an mean, X man now? Listen, assume you had one, two, three major things happen to you, and the first one was like uh, four rolls, the second one was two rolls, the third was three rolls, so a lot of stuff has happened to you. Imagine we imagine we go back to Corvanus and then uh Grohl is so magical he just explodes. He eats the magic. <laughs> just leaves a Girl black stepped off of the island and goes Hurt! just literally leaves a black trail through the ley lines as we walk across the continent good thing I got that arc commission paid up already <laughs> yes I'm so excited it's gonna be hot <laughs> that's one way to put it yeah it's a lot so yeah, I'm waiting. Don't worry. Rolled what? A nat one, a nat one hundred, <laughs> a one, a two, a nine. Jesus, we rolled so, so good. Jesus. to really pull out the disguise kit to get you anywhere. Oh yeah, you haven't made the gruel disguise art yet, have you? I haven't, I haven't, I haven't bothered. I'll, I'll get there eventually. We've just been on the sea and not doing any social stuff, and Cornelius would see right through my disguises, so. Uh, now it's time to have the Cornelius disguise. Even if I went full gnaw. Ah yes, hello, I am gnaw. Look, I'm going to kill the zombie as soon as it emerges. That, that makes me feel so fucking weird. Please don't do that. <laughs> don't worry, Yanar Alf. <laughs> Together, <laughs> we can take it. Together. Together. Don't want to see me naked. Together. <laughs> don't make me. Don't make me. <laughs> Took my ball sack. Yeah. Nope. Oh, oh. Actually, yeah. What does your what does your ball sack look like? If I give you a javelin, it's like a it, really small glaive, right? It, it's not yes. there. It's just all right. Great. All bone. <laughs> We'd look practically the same, except smaller, much much smaller. I have to work on my gnaw accent. This is not working at all. Yeah, yeah, a bit too sophisticated. Mm. Believe they said it was too uh, transatlantic. Yeah, that's the word. Yeah. Fancy. <laughs> yes, spits. Good. That's on the right track. I talk, talk like an orc. When to, you know, we got racist. Wow. <laughs> racist much? Nah, I get it. <laughs> it's because of the tusks. The tusks? The tusks! Yeah. I, mean, I mean, I'm missing the... Yeah. So well, no, mine may, <clears throat> mine are kind of more like um sharpened fang teeth all over. So I have to be careful not to bite me on tan. <laughs> you don't understand that all orcs are effectively like a monolith in terms of how they think and their character. Define monolith. I have no clue what that word in, is. In like, how you in how you mean it. Like you can just have presuppositions about orcs and they'll be accurate. Nothing really differentiates them as individuals. Wait. Wow, that's incredibly that just racist. Sounds like Marlo. racism. That's so unlike you. <laughs> Certainly not, not something that happened very early in our travels. It's not like I called an elf yeah. knife is my, because it's accurate my... to their physical description. I give my spiel oh. about feign ignorance as my primary method of comedy. <laughs> like I called this guy the flying demon from across the sea for a while there because he could fly at the time. And, and he I used was to match like a demon. He also oh, talked yeah. about wanting to flay someone's flesh to write his next poem for a while. But... It was a failed method of intimidation. It really wasn't my strong suit. Yeah. I'd say that's... I have more expertise in the persuasion skill. All right, you ready? Yeah, you fucking... See. All right, I'm, ready? Gonna, I'm just going to read this off for chat, um, and then I'll paste it. Okay. Um... You have been turned into a Apocalypse Zombie Prime. You lose, hmm. 
You lose all racial benefits to your attributes. Instead, you gain a plus four to an attribute of your choice. You gain the undead type and all associated traits for being undead. You also gain the following effects. Brain Eating. After killing an opponent, the zombie's ravenous nature takes hold and it uses its next turn to break open its victim's skull and eat the brain. This prevents others from raising the body from the dead by any method that requires an intact corpse. You must eat the brain of a victim within, at most, one minute before this effect takes over. Only sentient humanoids have sufficient brains. You must eat at least one qualifying brain per month in order to maintain your consciousness. Create Spawn. Anyone killed after being bitten by an apocalypse zombie rises as an apocalypse zombie 2d6 hours later unless the corpse is blessed or similar measures are taken. This zombie is in service to you and follows your commands if able. If it does not eat a qualifying brain within a week, they go berserk and feed until satisfied ignoring commands. Death Burst When an apocalypse zombie dies, it explodes in a burst of decay. All creatures adjacent to the apocalypse zombie are exposed to its plague as if struck by a slam attack and must make a constitution save or contract zombie rot. The prime can be returned to life as normal, except that a qualifying sentient brain must be offered in addition to other spell requirements. Disease. The zombie's natural attacks carry the zombie rot disease. And then there's the whole thing of zombie rot. Anyone who dies while infected rises as an apocalypse zombie in 2d6 hours. You qualify for all undead-related prestige classes, even if you do not meet the normal prerequisites. Huh. What does he look like? Uh, he looks pretty much the same, except there is a reddish hue to his skin. And his teeth are more feral and um, predatory. Ooh. So that's pretty much the same. Oh, well, that's neat. Reddish grill. Good. Huh. So, you got what you wanted. Now you can make as many pets as you want. Yeah. Huh. Cornelius smiles and shoots you finger crossbows. Oh no, it's the end. See, doesn't that feel better? It feels like I could become a rather large problem. Oh, speaking of which, I don't want you losing your shit here, so he'll snap his fingers and summon a brain and throw it to you. Go on, eat up. Uh, Wait, what? Gross. <laughs> what is that thing? That's a brain. A person's brain. Uh, and how, how does he like and a what brain looks thing? like? <laughs> how does he? Oh, wrinkly and gray and gross. I, I've never seen a brain, dude. How exactly does he feel oh. looking upon this thing? Have, have you? Your mouth starts to well, water. I, I, yes. I, so is this necessary now? Well, yeah, unless you want to die. Or I guess stop being alive. Or, I, well, not be inert. So brains are his fuel source? Yes, he eats them like food. Speaking of which, eat up! You're a big boy. You gotta get you gotta get grown up. Take care of all How those often does musty he have to fleshes. Eat About a month. Once a month he should be fine. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, I mean we brain a shitload of people all the time, so we can just take their brains, right? Yeah. If you if you need someone to do that dirty for you for you, girl, I can uh, I'll do that for you. Don't worry about it. I've seen I've seen this dude turn brains into mashed potatoes. Thank you uh, for your support. I'm just gonna, just gonna walk That's over right. Here. Walk around we the corner. The He's kind of shy. He, he doesn't want to eat in front of us. He hasn't oh. eaten like years, oh months. Oh, what a what a what a silly lad he is. <laughs> anyway, I rolled, the just in time time and... I rolled the apocalypse on me. That's so funny, dude. Uh, Do you have anything to ask with the, uh, the mother issues? Oh, Jesus Christ. You could make a, a zombie, I suppose, and then they'd be together forever as zombies. Woo. Eating everyone. Multiplying like... His mother. like Nara puts away her glaive. I'm killing him when we're done here. <laughs> I think When well, he's, he's finished his job, when it's all said and done, I'm killing the man. <laughs> I'm just... Oh yeah, you don't like zombies. 
My what? Oh, yeah. 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 What's your problem with zombies, hmm? Definitely not the fact that they are currently destroying me hometown. That's I why? There are so yep. many different things that destroy people's hometowns. Yep, but uh, that's that's the Drama. one that's causing me issues, and I'm sticking with it. Well, maybe you should find a new hometown, one that doesn't get destroyed by zombies. If the gods give you lemons, find a new set of pantheons to follow. Or follow yourself. That... That is weirdly accurate, and I don't like that metaphor. <laughs> the gods didn't give us lemons. They're a, oh, they're a, a they're a half breed. Yeah, we did them ourselves. Between a citron and a bit of a wedge. <laughs> you say a go the gods are a half breed? No, 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 no. no. Lemons, breed. lemons are a half breed. Citron and what? a sour orange. <laughs> no, anyway, so Gruel, <laughs> you're holding a big, juicy brain. Oh man. Word, it smells so good. I'm gonna beat right. off while he eats it. <laughs> you wanna? Sorry. Maybe just right here, Mr. Marlowe. <laughs> pull those pants up, young man. I mean, he can if he wants. <laughs> I'm going under the table. <laughs> ah, well, that's generally the idea. Yes. <laughs> oh well, God! You she's waiting it. for you, Marlowe. No, no, I'm not. I'm hiding. I'm, I'm oh! my eyes. Oh, now she's under me. <laughs> Sorry, uh, lass. Sorry, lass. I don't have those kinds of bones look... anymore. Nice. Nope, this no, way, no, no. actually. <laughs> Alrighty. So moving back to you, Gruel. You're holding a nice, fat, juicy, tasty-looking, very good-smelling brain in your hands. This was so much easier when it was just magic. So... I have something to tell you. Mm -hmm. The first time you eat a brain, you can never revert back. If you do not, there is hope for this affliction to leave you. I will tell you that if you resist the consumption of the brain, in a month, you will go insane. So you have a month to cure yourself. I remember that time where you say he doesn't want to be a monster. <laughs> he doesn't. Remember when he had an option, like, right there in front of him to be turned into a human? Again? All right, calm down. It's his scene. <laughs> What's it going to be? Yeah, it's his. He's, uh... Yeah, he's going to take his time to think about it. And he's going to go into his... Uh, don't don't medicine. say my palace. Okay. <laughs> no, his, his medicine. <laughs> Please, I already have one of those in this party. <laughs> no, he's uh, he's going to go into his medicine kit and just kind of prepare it, wrap it to make sure it doesn't go bad. He's just going to store it for now. Oh, okay. Do you but he's not going to mention it. He's going to store it and return and there he is, the conquering hero. Doesn't it feel good to be beautiful and dead? <laughs> uh, it's okay, there's nothing wrong. I was a shy pooper when I was young. Hmm. Uh, thank you for your assistance. Well, anyone else want to have their entire histories completely changed by my rancid magic? Hmm? No? Is he, is no. he looking at me? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, you're not really sure. He has no eyes, but yes, he's looking at you. Could I, could I keep the beard? At least? I'm sure that could be arranged. Hey, that's all you have to do. Bearded skeleton? Treat me like one of your French girls. <laughs> Wait, who no. knows? And take me to the first step of lichhood. Hell yeah. <laughs> I just want to see how many hundreds sagas and solids can get. We're at like eight now. <sighs> okay. 
So you want to walk the path of the lich. Yes. Going back to my books about colors and numbers. And oh, things. goody, goody gumdrops. No, oh, the druidic lich, right? Well, druidic. if you... Yeah, the druidic lich. Well, yes, I know. Thank you very much. I know more <laughs> than you. Follow me. Yeah, I know. Fuck, this feels, this feels like I'm selling my body. It should be the other way. <laughs> I'm restricted by my movement. Life sucks. <laughs> Alright, now we're away from all the fucking normies. Let's talk about how cool liches are. And how cool you're about to be. <laughs> Why in secret? You don't want them to know what your phylactery is, or else they oh. can use it against you. I see. He'll he'll tap the bald part of your head with his hand, or his skeletal hand. Don't you worry, Big Daddy Blackfire will take good care of you. Now, the phylactery has to be something special. Mm -hmm. Muy importante, yes? Muy importante, yes. Yes, yes, yes. It has to be something that is a part of you. It matters to you. Something you can anchor your soul to. Huh. Something perhaps even... to quiero. Yes? Yo quiero? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. So what do you suggest? Well, it could be anything, really. Any object. Uh, although some liches do choose living creatures, but I wouldn't suggest that. It's really unreliable and really random and unpredictable. Sounds like you could just randomly die. Yes. An object is something very dependable. If you put it somewhere, it'll be there unless someone steals it. But that's what all the undead and security is for. Hmm. So let's say I were to choose, like, you know, random pages. Or, like, this empty book I have. Well, that's what I did. He'll show you his book. Oh, I see. Could I could I leave my phylactery here, or do I have to keep it with me at all? Well, times? you 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 can leave it anywhere. The thing mm -hmm. about it is, is that you, uh, if you are destroyed, you reconstitute yourself where your phylactery is. So if you kept it here, you'd keep coming back here, and when we phase out, you'll be lost, and I wouldn't recommend it. Can I just use the portal to jump back in? Uh, not always. The ley lines are not always in sync to allow you to do that. Um, also, <clears throat> mm -hmm. you're a budding lich. You don't want to depend on me. What if I suddenly betrayed you and took your phylactery? I could do anything with it. I could put it inside of my skeletal butthole. You don't want that. So, what you need to do is pick a place. A nice place. A nice place for a dungeon, right? Then yes. you go in there, you dig it out, and you... You make a home. You make it. You make it nice. Somewhere that you could stay for a few years if you needed to, well, decades even. You put your phylactery there, and then you fill up the entire place with traps, with various servants, whether they be dead or living, and maybe even um, a few hidden rooms, and put a little treasure in there so that nascent um, thieves might think that to be the treasure room and leave in case your defenses should fail, and then. Perhaps even, in order to help fill your coffers, uh, leave rumor of that there is a dungeon there, but make it a completely different dungeon, right? You, you make up something else completely different. So everyone's going there expecting to kill a bunch of troglodytes, for example. And they go in there and they kill the troglodytes that you've supplanted, but not all of them will succeed. Some of them will die, you see. And then mm -hmm. you go through, you collect all of their loot, sell it, and you increase your wealth many times over. Your dungeon can be whatever it is that you want it to be. You're your own lich. I have a few ideas. No, nod. Well, what kind of phylactery do you want? I can teach you the ritual. I can't cast it for you, however. And that's the part of lichdom that makes it so much superior to everything else. You have to actually do it yourself. I see. Yep, no skips, no um no no quick overs, no shortcuts. If you have to if you want to do this, you have to do it right. 
Uh, help me pull out some ribs. Or does this have to just be one? Well, you could make it one of yourself, but that's not really uh, recommended. Because there are spells that can target your body no matter where it is. And if mm. they target you, then they also target your phylactery. You see what I mean? Tell you I what, see, I, see. I will offer a bit of help. What is something that no one could ever imagine you having? Or perhaps something that everyone thinks you would have, but you never have on you. Um... Gold? I'm poor? Hmm. Hmm. Generally speaking, you don't want to say that about yourself. How about a hat? Are you a hat type fellow? Eh, you know, when it's sunny, you know, I forget to put some, some lubricant on my head. It, it burns sometimes. I see, I see. How about... How about a bowler hat? <laughs> you know, it is pretty um, aesthetically pleasing to the eyes. Of course, audience. it goes right over your dome, gives you yeah. an extra bit of shade, and indeed, uh, it is a hat that no one would think anyone would actually wear on purpose, making it the perfect phylactery. Yes, it's somebody with such a terrible fashion sense. It, could never walk indeed, here. indeed, and well, there, I'm sure there are some, but they're not going to get their hands dirty. They're going to go send a bunch of adventurers who have no fancy sense. They'll find that hat and be like, "This is fucking stupid," and throw it away because they're idiots. Mm -hmm. Or better yet, they steal it along with everything else, and then you're destroyed, and then you reconstitute next to them while they're sleeping, and then you kill all of them, raise them, and piss in their buttholes. I mean, mouth holes. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, somebody could never destroy a hat, you know? It's, it's like a thing, you know, you just kind of put it off to the side. Indeed. So a hat, then? Yeah. A hat, yes. All right, then. He'll conjure a bowler hat. How's this? Mm, let's see if this fits. Boop, boop. Mm, head too square. Ah, there we are. Perfect. Beautiful. Well, then. Time to study. He'll pull out a tome. Go ahead and study this. Make uh -huh. sure you learn every bit of it. There will be a quiz later. All right. And then you'll suddenly realize he'll stop himself. Oh, oh my goodness, I'm getting emotional. Look at you. At the beginning of your journey to Lichdom. The facets of the secrets of death at your fingertips yet to be discovered. Power the likes of which that only people can dream of. Your ability to be important to a story that has long since abandoned you in favor of others. You will be forever relevant. You will be forever cool. And everyone, as he looks strangely up to the sky, will never forget you. I like that. That has a nice ring to it. He'll hold out his arm. We should return oh, oh, oh. to the others, girlfriend. <laughs> Too far, but yes. Yeah, he returns you to the others. Nice. Does he look like a skeleton yet? Not yet. He hasn't done the ritual. <sighs> ah. Nope. Just me. Change your mind or something? Yes. I did. Sadly. Mm. All right. I was able to convince him that his current path is the most just. He can do yes. the most good this way. And indeed, he can, um... Ugh, I hate your hair. He just gives up completely. <laughs> <laughs> Flourishes it like a L'Oreal right. commercial. Well, are you quite done here, or do you have more questions? Mr. Laws, I think he's jealous of my hair. Uh, I think we're done. At I'm, least I'm productive. jealous of your hair. It's very pretty. Huh, thank you. Almost Jesus. as pretty as Marlo's hair. Look at him, he's ah, so Marlo's handsome. Marlo's hair is yeah, quite pretty. Yeah, we should get one. Yeah, a, nice, get one. <laughs> a nice bouncy curl to it, really. <laughs> yeah, we should get one. <laughs> <laughs> could really use a beard. Mr. Marlowe, have you ever thought of growing out your beard? Uh, I have. It's not good. Oh. Oh, oh, I simply must see you with a mustache. Do you think he has a big, thick, bushy one? Oh, he could send no. orders. 
There's only no. one reason a man would be ashamed of his beard growing potential, and it's because he's probably got a very scraggly one. It's not scraggly, it's just thin. It's like pubes on your face. Well, that's about all I needed to hear. Where are you going next? <laughs> um... Yeah, fuck, I just threw myself off there. Uh, I think... <laughs> Uh, I love Luke. I, I think Luke we're going cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think we were going to push him. He can't handle real yeah. life compliments either, did it? <laughs> we, we gotta. So, th there are three things we should accomplish. One is personal gain and development stuff. So, you know, where's power? Fucking. What's the space in a space? Like, what's about Amber? All that jazz. The other is figuring out, putting a ribbon on, what can we do? Because we know we have a bunch of little snippets of what we can do based on our newfound knowledge as well as our knowledge of the acorns and all that shit. What do we do? Um, that, that's the third thing. It's like, well, where do we go from here? We need, we need to suit ourselves up with the appropriate knowledge Pick a path forward and go from there. Mm. Good. Sounds. sounds we, like there's a lot fun. of talk about like, oh yeah, we'll solve the demon waste. We'll solve the. No. We'll solve the world tree. We'll uh, I still think my stupid thing. <laughs> I, I still oh, think no it's offense. worthwhile to at least uh, still talk to the Whispering King, if nothing else. Oh, the. Why? Talk to who? How do we talk to the Whispering King? Well, we know where he's at, or at least how to get to him. You just go just... and speak to him? What? Well, it'll take some time and work, but I don't see why not. The whole, they'll wipe the plant, you know, the continent clean thing is still a worry. Well, wouldn't it be simpler to just go to the, um, to the, um, to the grove? Then do yeah. the thing with the acorns Go and ignore problem. that problem entirely? Well, do we know the acorns will fix it? Yes. Yes. It's been explained at least four times by Mr. Cornelius and the books and various things. We're, we're, let, let's assume yeah. assume we need five, because that's all, all we've been given. And the person who gave them to us was pretty adamant on them being able to do something. Um, we're, at, we're at four out of five. Well, it was how many also... Just, how many go in the grove? Is are we the ones to do that? Well, these are the things yeah. we should hash out. Well, it was also explained that if we were going to clear out the groves, we also would have to deal with some of the symptoms, such as the broken brothers. No, no the broken brothers is very far from the groves. It's it's near the broken oaks. I'm aware. There are it, there are a thousand things that is fucking wrong with this place. Pick one. The grove. grove. The grove seems to be the biggest. And we have the means of fixing it. Well, I, four out of five of the means to fix it. My only worry, if we go straight to the grove, there's going to be so much that we don't still understand what's happening there. But if we get to the Whispering King, who's another a speaking probably, talking person who interacted with Tyr, who interacted with the experiments, who was, for all we know, the, the key component to all of this, I feel like we would be able to gain a massive tool to assist, and as stated, it was we're going to have decades before we actually even need to assault the Grove. Hmm. I agree so, that we should the Whispering yeah, King is... Well, the Whispering King is the next logical step of at least where we've come from. And it is in proximity to the Barrow King. There are there are his men that are waiting for us. So I my vote is also for the Whispering King, if that is your vote. I think mm. a, a first person view of this would be most helpful. We're, we're literally I, in the library of Casael. We, we can find out those things, the everything, all of it. And the closest we can get is a second person view of 
with a bunch of missing aspects of what this is. Do we actually even know what we would end up fighting in the grove? Some kind of aberrations, wasn't it? Or is beyond your comprehension? Something. <laughs> and from my understanding, this whispering king was infected with it. He would have the most knowledge on how to combat it. The whispering it, I king was... Oh, wait, the whispering king was that head of the one guy. Mm-hmm. Hmm. There is much so, knowledge that can be gained from going to the direct location where Tyr's notes would be. Only knowledge, or are you hoping to gain an ally? If he helps, I would prefer it if he, you know, didn't decide that should we fail at the Grove, destroy the continent anyway. I suppose that wins me over. The idea of a potential ally is... good. Miss Nar, what do you think? I think I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> like, I I found the problem. It's right there. It's the grove. We but have can we handle it? the acorns. Can we handle it? Heck if I know. Well, That's what we're trying to figure out from here, aren't we? Well, I hate to go in half-cocked. I mean... Uh, Cornelius, uh, you mentioned the acorns, but do you uh, would you know how exactly we could use them to replace a world seed? Would it be simply planting them? Oh. Seed. What? Oh, uh, <clears throat> you mentioned that the uh, acorns would be able to assist with the broken world seed. How exactly would that work? Would we simply just plant a bunch of them? But no, I told you already. You have to go to the Silborn Grove. Were you paying attention? Yeah. We have I to remove the corrupted seed and put in the new yes, seed. Yes, you have to plant it in the right spot. And We have to take out the old one, though. And do we know where that is? Yeah. Exactly? <laughs> I showed you! Yes! Why are we having this? I'm sorry, you know, why are I we having this I think I might discussion? have messed up his brain when I transformed him. I apologize, everyone. Let's take a look. I, I fucking doubt that. He was hmm, similar to this before, but well, not we quite this bad. Island. I was just talking about the exact location in which the World Seed was located. That's what I was getting at. It's, do, I don't know exactly what? where it is. You'll have to do, oh, I don't know, a little bit of work when you get there to figure it out. Yes, I imagine in the middle somewhere, Mr. Nenenoth. Yes, and I imagine if we go to this Whispering King, find the notes of about within, it, we would probably be able to find its exact location. This is where Tyr was doing much of his work. I suppose that's fair. Anyway, the point is, you know where to go. I, 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 mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to do your job for you. I have helped you immensely. Quite a lot. Yes. Certainly more yes. than anybody well, ever uh, helped me. There's a choice between the Whispering King and the Grove, then. Um, your position makes a lot of sense, Nar. I just don't think that we are the ones to do it, or able to. We're Maybe. the only ones who know about it. I disagree. I think we are the ones to do it, but I also agree with Mr. Ninanoth that we need to have more information. I think going after the Whispering King first would be wise. My only worry is we're not sure to complete this mission. And if we can at least get to the Whispering King, get information, we can <coughs> then also send that information forward to, well, other groups that we've now discovered exist. I'm sorry, you trust these people? Yes, what if they're I up to their own devices? I do not trust that we are surefire to win. What if, what if yeah, there no. are traveler souls that are entirely dedicated to the cause of Metheria? Have you thought about that? Well, there are. Yes, I assume there would be. Yes. There's also some completely dedicated to getting drugged out of their gourd. <laughs> and having sex with... Shock this is sweet. People. You're in the wrong group. <laughs> why, why have I been born here? 
or grand purpose or something. I don't know. It's a lie. But, uh, but no, I don't know who these other people are. I'm not trusting them with anything. The point is that we don't trust any one person. And I don't think we should put too much trust in ourselves either. I think that we should make sure that everybody that can help has the opportunity to help. Everybody else that lives on Corvanus certainly does not want the continent to die. And if, from what well, I understand... Your rules about the mirrors and interfering with other traveler souls, is there a way to do that properly? Can we speak to these other travelers? Well, Please. you can conventionally communicate with them using magic, such as sending and other such things. I was referencing that you cannot directly interact with your own refractions. Of course, the matron of fate would make a big deal about you interfering with the fates of others, but she also doesn't understand that she smells like shit on a constant basis. Uh, I I really don't like the matron of fate, but I there's something in me that respects her, I guess. I don't understand. Well, you're a better man than me, because I don't. I think as far as deities go, she's about as well, about as useful as Vinsk. Vinsk? Who the fuck? Oh, Vinsk, yeah. Well. The god of autumn does fuck all. But no. Bro. We've, we've had talks like this before. Convince me. Why do you think there would be more important information at the Whispering King location? It's... We know a... what the end goal is. Why would we want the middle stuff? Because it's about how we get there, what we need to face, what exactly was done over there, and, I don't know, perhaps direct tools that he left behind to deal with him specifically? Is it? Or is it just about the bonding of the four great spirits? I mean, that's always going to be a part of what I state, but no. It is also about everything that we could learn about it. I just don't. Sending, I look. <laughs> I, as much as Marlo wants to think that we can't do anything, I also disagree with that. But we're not infallible. We're not capable of doing anything. We are. Also we can capable. do. We can do a lot of things, cool. But the the problem is that what we can do is just casually thrown about the the table. Like, oh yeah, well, we yeah, let's go fix the Barking Brothers. Yeah, let's go fix the the Grove. Right. There's many problems. We don't have to fix them all. That's is a severe lack of humility in what but, we are able to do. I'm sure we can rise to any occasion, but we have to pick something. And honestly, something small and manageable, I think, is wise. Well, I'm not quite sure it's what small. What would you suggest, Mr. Marlowe, manageable. as something small and manageable? Perhaps seeing if the Whispering King still has sentience, if the head of Belladan is, you know, still speakable with, and talking to it. I am a bit biased on that being the logical progression of why we are here, and I, I could be swayed to going to the Grove. It's just something precise and direct as a goal to move forward to is necessary and, and we we so failed about it. my reason for going to the grove is this we were told that by multiple entities the world is going to collapse all right it's all gonna fall apart the quickest way to fix that is by going to the grove and we've learned that we came here and we learned that we had the tools given to us by the Hatamad to fix the problem. That right there is the main problem. Sure, we can go to the Whispering King. Sure, we can learn more, but it wastes time. Well, we have time. Yeah, we, we have been found that, for the most part, things won't get irreversible <coughs> for about, what was it? 
30, 20, 30 years? I think the problem we're running into here is a matter of impatience rather than um, hubris. I think Mr. Marlow uh, fears the change of plans, and so he makes very small baby step plans. And Mr. Ninanoth, you and I are rather similar in our long range of plans, and we tend to feel very badly when they go south, or change. It's not the change of plans, it's it pick a fucking plan. Are we putting it to a vote? I think we should. We can move forward for the time being and explore the rest of this library, but we need to have in the back of our minds a direction that we can all come back together and figure out what to do about. Agreed. So we shall table it for now. No, we should vote. No, th yeah, yeah. Vote. You want to and vote right now? Yeah. Most of the research and then that'll in be... the back of our minds. Yeah. Mo most of the research we have left is just uh, equipment and alchemy, self-improvement, stuff like that sort. Mm. Well then. I'm sorry, Miss Nar, but I vote for the Whispering King. The Whispering King. As it is a step in the plan that will lead to the greater. Swig, what are you voting for? We have time. We should use it. Chrome, what do you think of this? You seem to stand at a neutral point like I do. To be honest, I sit here as you guys argue, like usual. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter where we go. There'll always be a problem. We can only do one thing at a time. The Grove for the Whispering King. We're next to the Whispering King, so... We are pretty close to the Whispering King, yes. I vote Whispering King. There it is. There's four for Whispering King. So be it. The party has made their decision. I'll uh, begin to make those preparations. And you said you were going to explore the sages next? The sage? Um, what? Marlow is... That question... Uh, I, that, I, those questions will take a lot for me to answer, so I need to prep them for next time. Also worth I would it. like to. So. Um, yeah, I would like to, as long as that doesn't eat into... Um, I know Chrome has a lot of questions that are non... Memories. Yeah, discoveries that are non-chromatic related, as well as like enchanting weapons and stuff. And then I think Nar and I want to do power words. There's a couple more, like oh, spell. The I think the uh, the oratory and stuff is something to hit. All right, um, then. In that case, go ahead. Would and, uh... would say would say just eat out of our ability to kind of do character progression stuff? No, no. I just need to know if you're going to ask about them, so I have them ready for you because that's like deeper stuff I would like to yeah if you guys are cool with that I mean I try yeah. to spend as little time as possible on stream and in session looking shit up like <laughs> trying to find where it is so mm -hmm. they're not eating up your time yeah okay yeah alright in that case that's what we'll do we'll call a session uh, at this time good session guys. awesome very good good session guys my favorite, Ooh, so my, much favorite, information. my favorite part was roasting people. <laughs> <laughs> there were good, good roasts. Lord. Man. Oh, man. Hey, guys. I'm a, <laughs> a walking apocalypse. Let's go. You're the end of the world. Nice. Every that, zombie movie ever in that, Grill. That was hilarious to me to have rolled that. <laughs> that is crazy, dude. The walking apocalypse, a hip hop apocalypse. I'm a All right, we only have one piece of fan art memeing. Absolutely oh. fucking beautiful. That's that's what I needed, right there. <laughs> you sure about that? Oh, if you scroll it, up, the beard yeah, and skeleton. Up. <laughs> Wait, did we? With oh, oh, I didn't even see yeah, that up there. Oh, I'm sorry. That looked. Wait, oh, yeah. That was posted yesterday. Okay, that's why I didn't fucking see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. All right, we got some magic cards here. <laughs> Ooh. First strike case. Solid one. design, by the way. It's good. Uh, 
good flavor to ability Venn diagram oh, yeah. right there. Pretty good. Very cool. A little expensive for red, I think, but true. true. Investigate. Tell where you land. She's also so small. Yep. Transformation card. Transformation cards. Creature. I mean, these are cards that casuals would use, obviously. Well, oh, yeah, you don't, know. Don't even get me fucking started on you again tomorrow. I, 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 <laughs> have you have you seen it's, my, it's my about, variants? It's about hitting your fantasy that you want. Why do you have Mold Drifter? That's a bad card. Have you seen my various Good popper decks? <laughs> Good lord. It's nerf X, you control cost one less. Ooh. All of my favorite decks come out of the Goodwill bin. Like, and fucking dumpster diving for popper decks is beautiful. The funny, yeah, thing is, fun, is that, uh, funny thing is that that is actually already a card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, uh, Riff, yeah. did you just put Wretched Griff as hey, a different hey, card? The, the creature is just a 3 3. Can I have a Wretched Griff instead? It's a 3 4 and has abilities. I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> Why does the creature not have flying? Right. Why does it not have Tragedy. flying? Tragedy. It's all good. Oh man! Or banding? What is that? Is that the horse? No, horsemanship. Is that what it is? Horsemanship. You remember that shit, dude? <laughs> I do. Uh, flanking uh, next. Oh, oh yeah, man, it's very good. Alrighty, <laughs> good game, everybody. I'll see y'all next good. time. <laughs> Bye. Bye.